a sacrifice seduced for the altar of your vanity. A jealous, hungry God craving praises of profanity. With bedroom dark and dine and a deep mouth stained with wine, it drinks. It's filled. It was your mother's, much your brother's, that agreed to feed you poison. This egregious lack of choice indeed seemed fit to join your voice in. With lies disguised as prizes of reason and wisdom, with briberies of finery to weaken any criticism. Can the fly invade the blossom that devours it? All right, um, good day, uh, afternoon, evening, or morning, wherever you might be. Um, it's going to be a little bit shorter today, but we're going to be on session 104 tonight. Uh, we've advanced forward just a couple of weeks. It's uh, the end of April. Um, you guys have all heard rumors that uh, the first citizen, uh, Princeps uh, Camillus, has a series of special events planned for the uh, Floralia Festival. Um, traditionally, uh, this is a series of games set over uh, five days that celebrate um, birth and spring rites. Um, it's more earthy, shall we say, uh, a little more plebeian in nature than some of the other festivals that go on. Um, there's a lot of rumors going around uh, rumor has it that at least one of these events is going to be a uh, tournament of ghouls, and the winner gets a very, very special prize for their master. Ghouls and or other retainers, as long as it's not another canite. So, um, everybody has been invited to the opening ceremonies at the Elysian Fields Bathhouse. The uh, do, 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 I'll move you guys over to that. Uh, you do know that the opening ceremony is going to be held in the private uh, the gymnasium over here in the right hand side. You have been there too much. Normally you take place in the bathing chambers or the meetings and such, but there is a, a field for private games, and that's where the opening ceremonies are going to be. So, a little bookkeeping before we get started proper. Um, each of you guys are, of course, back to full willpower if you were down at all, and I'd like you to roll a d10, and you want to roll low because you're going to subtract that number from your full blood pool, and that's where you're at for tonight. Uh, two out of three, pretty good numbers. <laughs> All right. It is opening night. Uh, the bathhouse is packed. You would say that there's easily 150 K nights here. Easy. Packed. All over the place. Uh, K nights of all social stratas are mixing. You see lowly immigrant fledglings with the Methuselahs of the distant past. Um, Bester, as usual, attracts a very large crowd. His uh, beautiful face almost radiates a light in the darkness of the baths, so it's just very dimly lit with just a few torches. Um, you see Montano there, almost seeming to glide around the torches, the constantly shifting crowds playing tricks with the orange light. And if you're not used to seeing him, You'd almost ask yourself, are the shadows always like this around him, or is it just a trick of the packed audience? 
know, they seem to dance and flow. Uh, there's also, of course, crowds of admirers near into the other elders of power, looking for uh, audiences or just trying to get a bit of attention or, or a favor. So you guys are all there. Uh, there's a little bit of music playing. Um, of course, rumors running rampant. Uh, everyone's excited, talking about the upcoming festivities, waiting on the opening games. So, you guys are there, you're mingling. Um, let's get going. First question, um, do we know uh, who are the people that are submitting goals for each of the games? Do you know who has a stake? You do not, them? but uh, if you have bothered to ask, uh, the Malkavian, uh, Drusilla Euphemia, is the one who is coordinating this, so she's taking names. Yes, Albina is going to proceed to approach the Cilla in the festivities if she is present. She is present. Uh, she's present, having a good time, talking to some people. She sees you glide up, um, as you do. Uh, of course, you were unnatural chill, um, frightening off some of those who are unused to it. Uh, most of the new ones who are the newbies. And uh, she just smiles and um, embraces you, kisses your cheek. Albina, Albina, good to see you. So glad to see that you have survived your recent troubles. Uh, wonderful to see you at the uh, party for the Peter Petre and see you honor, here to honor um, all our fathers. Giving uh, her kiss back, she's going to proceed to. A uh, smile to her. I did, not bring, I did not miss the opportunity to be part of one of the celebrations of our prince. After all, I do not believe that there is anyone in Rome or anywhere else in the known world that could outdo his uh, that could outdo his parties. Oh, if you stick around for all all nights of the games you may hear of a few wild parties that put ours to shame not for lack of trying of course she's going to uh, laugh softly at this perhaps i still remember the last time that we met each other in here i believe we uh, we had a knowledge together with uh, Arconia and some of the other sinners, yes? Oh, it, yes, I do vividly remember that. It's, uh, it's a shame that uh, you give your love so deeply to your uh, to your gods and uh, so much less to what is here before you and now, but that's neither here nor there, but you always know that should the temptation overcome you, you know where to find us. Of course. Mm -hmm. Speaking about temptations, I find myself tempted to uh, see if I can get into on these upcoming celebrations, these upcoming uh, tutorial games that are going to be taking part of during the celebrations. Mm. Oh, have you a candidate in mind? Mm. Not a candidate, no. But rather, I'm curious, perhaps there may be uh, there are rules in regards to sponsoring candidates of others. Oh, there's no... The... Our, uh, our father has promised a special prize to the Master of the Winner. Uh, I'm not at liberty to say more uh, regarding that. It's just, it is to be a surprise. Um, so, there's no sponsoring somebody else's, uh, fighter. I see. Now, if you were to submit one, if someone were to lend you a fighter to submit, well, if they enter under your name, they enter under your name. Mm -hmm. And how long until the timeline for submitting fighters is over? Uh, 
until the end of the festivities tonight. Then I believe I better get to work and seeing what I can arrange. Well, do have fun. Uh, try not to step on too many toes while you're doing it. Uh, and I look forward to seeing what you can bring to the arena tomorrow night. I will try to provide a safe through and show that whoever I bring is able to provide a good show. I do hope so. And I'm sure all of us will enjoy the entertainment uh, regardless of how well he does. It's a as long as it's entertaining. She proceeds to give uh, Drusilla another kiss before she starts making her way back. Is there Ali Hamas nearby? Is he around? Um, he is around. Uh, uh, he is schmoozing uh, with the best of them. Uh, he's seemingly at home in the crowd. Um, he's not talking to elders, though. He is uh, moving around talking to a lot of the newbies. Hmm. Actually, I think instead of going for Iham, she might... Nah, she's going to go first to Iham, yes. Okay. She's going to be approaching Iham. Right. Um, make a uh, etiquette roll to butt in without offending everyone he's talking to. Uh, until it's uh, wits plus etiquette. It's going to be difficulty five. You, you're at home in the social scene for the most part. Well, it's not a botch, so um, you're just kind of boorish when you when you when you cut in. So yeah, he's uh, he's standing there talking to some people. He kind of sees you approaching, um, gives you a little nod to let you know he saw you, and turns back to his business. So, how do you approach them? She's going to be standing by the side. Uh, Probably not, while well, not trying to make herself uh, invade, invade uh, this conversation, she probably stands uh, close enough to the point where the corners of her body causes a uh, visual, uh, is felt by the people that he's talking with. Probably uh, what Mitchell comes off as boorish. Yeah, you're, you're, you're given on um, the, uh, uh, the creeper stare. Yes. Yeah. Um, eventually they're like, they start looking at you like, is there is there a problem like and, and he just kind of you you see him speak a few uh reassuring words saying you know hey I'll, we'll come back to this later tonight um uh, how about you go enjoy yourself and have fun I'll let, let me talk to her and I'll come back to you and they scattle off to uh go do their own thing and he looks at you and he smiles broadly clearly enjoying himself Alpina is going to approach, giving him a nod as she uh, closes him. And I am so good to see you this night. Oh, I'm glad to see you well. Have been enjoying yourself, I see. So many new faces, so many young, impressionable minds to speak to. Uh, so many ways to spread the word. You are looking for converts amongst the newcomers of a city. Uh, I wouldn't put it like that, but how can you know your true path if nobody has told you about it? If people have to tell you for, about your true path, there is, if, you do not uh, if you do not have your own struggles to get there, then how can you know if you are worthy of that path? Uh, the very act of struggling will prove you worthy, or not. Mm. I understand what you mean. We all need we all need to be to have someone to show us our options that lie open to us before we are able to take them. After all, 
but mm, I believe that true faith, true conviction comes more from searching for those options even when you're not sure that they are there. You are very close to understanding the point of why I speak to the new, uh, to the youth. They lack a guiding light to, and he, he kind of quirks because he realizes the uh, oxymoron of saying that to you, um, to uh, show them where salvation may be found. But they must choose it of their free will. It cannot be forced upon them. Yes. Is that uh, is that how also you came to first uh, meet Laetia? How you f she first came to become your so good child, so to speak? Ah, an, an interesting story. You are familiar with... Do you remember the struggles of um, Acteon? the gangrel who had attempted to force others out of the Chesta Verde. Do you remember? Yeah. Yes. The one that you wanted me to expel. Yes. Yes. Well, in the middle of all this, um, I happened to find a way to speak to his childa. Um, and found her receptive to an alternate path, one that does not solely involve violence and one that respects the fact that there is more to life than simply territory and hunting. He chose poorly for his purposes, but very wisely for mine, I should say. It took me several years of cautious talk before she began to seek me out on her own. She seems to have taken quite well to her new path. I imagine no small path because she had such a capable mentor to guide her once she decided to sort it out by herself. The faith of our kind is one that is determined and proven by challenges. It is not one that it can simply be told or found. As you said, you must prove yourself not worthy of the faith. You must prove yourself the master of, of the faith. You must prove that you are capable of wielding the responsibility of worshipping the divine. I am sure that in your own studies you have found a... Uh, how can I put this? A phrase, a, a sentiment. You have found a sentiment very similar in your own studies, have you not? Yes. Although I believe we come uh, to that sentiment through different lens, different eyes. We come to the understanding that we have to, we must not just master our faith, as you say, but also master the, master the creatures, the very stuff of our faith, the very stuff of the abyss, we must not it not I am mastery of self and belief, but mastery of also others, of of another, of another. She looks down. She seems to be struggling for a second. It's difficult to explain what the abyss is like for one that has not touched it. 
And what makes you think I've never touched it? The terminology may be different. But we are given to visions of the underworld, of the devouring snake of Apep. Uh, the one that consumes all at the end of time, at the end of sunlight, at the end of life and death. Your experience may be more intimate, I will grant, but the faith that drives us is of similar quality. And she talks about the snake that devours life, that devours the world, that which lays at the end. That voice resonates with our own thoughts of the abyss, and she finds herself not. Yes, I can see that. Perhaps the abyss and the guts of Apep are one of the same location. Or, if not one in the same location, then at the very least of similar purpose in the cycles and uh, meaning of the in the cycles of the world, in the path, in the cycles of rebirth, destruction. Perhaps when you speak of such cosmological um, vast concepts, it can be difficult to grasp their importance. We know, as a matter of faith, if nothing else, that ultimate destruction has a purpose in the cycle of life and giving. Have not the Greeks, do they not... Um, speak of the cycle of life and death of Persephone dragged to Hades of uh, the god of the underworld even the god of the underworld needing life and love and the cycle of his own grief of life emerging anew from death every year of course after if there is no life then how can there be death and if there is no death then life would become stale. That's correct. If there's no, to even interpret more broadly, if there's no challenge, if there's never a risk, then how can you state that you truly exist? If you're in a, a, a state of stasis, if you just simply exist without challenge or risk or uh, contest of anything, are you truly existing? Are you, do you, or are you even, can you state that you, uh, that your spirit um, is active? You notice that you guys are starting to gather a little bit of a crowd. Um, some people are, are listening to you talk. And she glances around at the crowd. Hope not looks back to Ahans and says, Looks like we have attracted some uh, spectators. Well, I, there are many who seek knowledge that uh, their elders may have perhaps denied them, or that. Uh, I happen to know, and he points at a couple of them, and he introduces them, and he says, you know, I know some of these uh, younglings here are n both new to the city and new to our existence, um, seeking mentorship and guidance. Uh, they know that there is more than simply attempting to be human, that our existence has moved beyond such a stage. Far be it for me to deny them this. Mm. The way that I see it, just as mm, the younglings can also find a place, the younglings have the opportunity to find the place under the teaching of the elders, but 
so many of the younglings seem to get lost along the way. They do. They too quickly lose their path, or they realize that without help, the only path they have is to embrace their own beast. Speaking of, I have heard through the grapevine that you've been spending some time with uh, the Nosferatu. Uh, is that true? Uh, anything you care to talk about? Delicious, yes. Mm. Well, I have come to the understanding that evolutionally, uh, my path, my, under, my studies of the abyss originated from the studies of the beast. And I have been given the task to learn about this path of the beast as a way to understand the roots of my own uh, chosen path. Mm. And you take all of their words of your elders at face value, do you? And he smiles a very knowing smile. Are you suggesting that you know better than that? I said nothing of the sort. I listen to the instructions and I follow them for as long as they remain aligned with my desires and with my own understanding. Obeying the instructions of your elders are... It's not the same as believing everything they tell you. You are asking if I believe is that my path finds its roots in the path of the beast? No, for I believe it does. I believe that... Those who know not of what they speak might believe or even think that or perhaps they even know for certain that uh, originally the only way to live was to know the beast but I say to this to you are you so certain regardless of your mentor's knowledge of the road that you study, are you so certain that that is why they want you to study it? I can see... I can see the possibilities that perhaps they might have other reasons to want me to set me on this way, on this path, yes, to set me on this course of action. But, if they, but I do not know what those possibilities might be, what the end goal might be. He just nods. It's enough that you understand. And always remember that appearances, much as your Greek philosopher Plato would say, the Appearance of a thing is not necessarily the true thing. Something that I believe every one of us that had been alive as long as we have would be well aware of, yes. Alright. Um, he kind of makes a gesture of, of dismissal and, and people start breaking up. He says, now, um, was there another purpose? To uh, you seeking me out, I've uh, as much as I enjoy our conversation, we could have this more intimately and comfortably um, in private. Yes, the reason why I sought you out is because I perhaps wondered if you have a, a stock of goods available for, uh, that you rent out. Or perhaps slaves that would be capable of, of uh, performing in the upcoming games that could be sold and good. 
I do have some high performing slaves. Um, I've gotten out of the mass dealing of uh, such things. I set my sights on more expensive options. Um, I do have some... I have not entered anyone in the tournament. I'll put it like that. But I do have a few valuable uh, protectors that might do well should I uh, seek to enter them. I'd like to get my hands in one of them. Well, how can I put this? I... My retainers... No, not my retainers. Those who serve me, I am not eager to see them use their talents in such a contest. But, um, if you seek to take one of the slaves, which I can get my hands on, uh, that we can discuss. Yes. Uh, the slaves. And I need to make a roll and see what he can come up with off the top of his head. Do, 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 do. Oh, let's see. Gonna roll his. How much foresight does he have? We're gonna say intelligence and. Um, okay, as it turns out, he does have, uh, he says, I, I have a, uh, a warrior that had to sell himself into slavery to pay off some debts. Uh, he was quite well trained. Uh, currently he, uh, he had spent some time as a uh, free man, as a gladiator, um, but he ran into some, uh, terrible gambling debts and had to sell himself in to my stable of uh, servants to pay it off. So uh, one does not come by such a warrior quickly or easily. So let us discuss the price of uh, rental, shall we say. Uh, you have only a few hours of training with him, should you wish to enhance him. Uh, I do not have him currently, he has not supped upon uh, the vitae of my kind. So let's discuss uh, what we can, uh, what, what agreement we can come up with. What did you, what did you have in mind? Give me an offer. I can spend about two resources, dots of resources worth with, uh, not sure how much in uh, Roman denies that would yeah. be. Um, he just waits it off. We, money, 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 no, 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 no. I, I get all the money I need from the, from the mortals uh, who have availed themselves of my service. It is, uh, while well, coinage is appreciate it, it is not required for this transaction. What else did you have in mind? I can provide you with another boon to be repaid. Hmm. How about this? How about I take possession of the boon that Valeranius owes you? 
a major boom to Valerianus. That is a steep price. He just smiles and he kind of steeples his fingers. Um, uh, you get the um, instant impression that he is enjoying the bargaining process. Mm -hmm. Let us make it instead a minor boom with myself. After all, I am only requesting to borrow a mortal from your hands. In the end, I could argue that by provide by having him good with my blood, and then giving him back to you, you'd have under your hands a good capable of uh, the gifts of my clan. I could I could argue that I even enhance one of your uh, slaves. Um, you could if I planned to keep him enhanced, as you put it, but I don't. I plan to let him go back to being a normal human. So far, he has not proven himself sufficiently worthy of the honor of then our perhaps, Then it is uh, had his particip participate in this coming duels is even better, for it gives the perfect chance for him to prove himself worthy of a station among your retainers. Hmm. Well, and what if he is hurt badly? What if he dies? If he's hurt badly, that is something that the blood can heal. If he dies, then you have not lost anything, really. After all, he is not. Uh, he's, if he dies, then he's clearly not as competent as he's first presented himself to be to you, and merely helping you get rid of defective merchandise. Ah, but he's going up against other, similarly or even super superiorly enhanced and trained opponents. So I argue that you, if he were to die, I would be robbed of the potential to develop him as such, or sell him for a greater profit. But what is there to develop if you do not plan on keeping him in the first place? And what is the point of profit if you are already well set in you know, the monetary area? There are other ways of profiting besides money. There are favors. Uh, the humans, of course, uh, provide. And, of course, there are... You do must secure your income... And as I said, the humans are good for that. Uh, renting out bodyguarding services, trainers, uh, selling him as a teacher. All are good things. All procure a steady supply of income. So, here's my proposal. I will rent him to you uh, for the contest. For a minor boon from you. And should he die... Uh, your minor boon will be stricken from the record and I will take possession of the boon that Valeranius owes you. Acceptable, yes. Wonderful. Um, and he holds out his hand to seal the deal. Abna takes his hands within hers and he, uh, proceeds to give him a handshake. Uh, uh, he is... He smiles at a bargain struck, um, and the fact that you both feel that you've profited from it. Um, Labiana, as you are wandering the crowd, you see this speech, this talk going down. Um, you feel a tug on the sleeve of your garment. And when you look, you, there's nothing there. And then your other sleeve gets tugged. If you're speaking, I can't hear you. <laughs> That's alright, I missed the last part of what you right. said because you cut out for me. <laughs> um, so you're, you're in the crowd, mingling, kind of see Albina doing her thing. 
and you feel a tug on your sleeve. And as you kind of turn around to look, there's nobody there, and then you feel your other sleeve, somebody like tugs on it. Um, and when you turn to look at that, there is a small figure, um, about five feet tall, so it's smaller than you, um, in a grayish um, robe, uh, a covering, like a cloak, it covers his whole frame, and the hood is up, and it's kind of drawn low. And you catch a little glimpse of his hands, and his hands are twisted and deformed. Um, and you realize, you have met this person before, this is the Nosferatu Redolinius. She'll turn to greet him. Uh, can I help you? Oh, it's the other way around. I believe you needed to speak to me, from what I hear. Uh, yes, of course. Uh, thank you for coming to speak to me. Um... Yes, I wish to speak to you regarding, um, perhaps, uh, investing in, out of character, I'm trying to remember exactly what it was, something about, um, finding a, a location somewhere in the city, uh, bigger than our, um, me and my mentor's mm -hmm. current location. Yep. He, he, I was... He, okay, keep going. Oh, I was going to say... Yes, I was, I was wondering uh, if you would be able to help me in that regard. Well, certainly, sweetie. We can do a lot of things. Uh, of course, the question is, what do we get from you? What do we get from you and your... Uh, your corpsey mentor, Fazia? Well, we, again, out of character, I'm not sure um, what Falzia's, um finances, so to speak, would be like. I know. Uh, Lovian, not much. <laughs> the answer is not much. <laughs> yeah. So, truth be told, uh, we don't have much to provide in the way of finance, but I'm sure we could find another means to compensate you. All right. He kind of laughs this phlegmy <coughs> <coughs> laugh. And uh, you kind of see the cheap hood jiggle a little bit, and you see the... Um, Mouthful of sharp teeth. Uh, just for a, a second in the light before the hood falls back down. He goes, he goes, uh, and he holds out his hands. He goes, does it look like we wear gold jewelry and fancy clothes to you? Yeah. No, no. I... Well. Fabiana <laughs> does give a, a slight nod, but and says, well, you know, you never know one's uh, true tastes, I guess. But, um, as I say, we will offer what we can. Well, let me ask you this. What do you know of the goals of, of, of my goals? Of the goals of those to whom I owe protection and support. Vienna will ponder for a moment. Admittedly, very little. Well, I'm going to do something I don't normally do, and that's be a little candid. Are you 
Do you uh, appreciate being surrounded by ugliness all the time, 24-7? I'm sorry, can you repeat that last part? Yeah. Kind of cut out yeah. again. Do, do you appreciate being surrounded by nothing but ugliness? By um, nothing but plain work or spoiled remains? Uh, do you enjoy no finer things? 24-7, 365? Oh, I'll admit, I've never really thought of such things. I myself uh, am not, um, shall we say, fascinated by anything that's shiny or valuable. Oh, he shakes his head. But that is me. He shakes his head. He says, fascination has nothing to do with it. I have heard the descriptions of your uh, inner cult sanctum. I know that you have beautiful things to look at. Paintings. Carvings. Artifacts of historical value. The plant that your companion Hatshepsut took back from Carthage that I hear sadly rests now in an urn. Do these things strike you as at least pleasant? Uh, do you spend no time in contemplation of them? Um, well, personally, not for me. However, I do understand they hold great significance uh, for others. I have my own things, of course, which I find infinitely more valuable, but again, that that is for me. Well, when you live your entire life surrounded by the cast-offs, hunting on the outskirts, you find that you appreciate things of a cerebral aesthetic significance a well-carved fountain a nice painting are we fascinated like the uh, children of Arakel? no such things do not occupy our eternal attention but isn't it nice to wake up to come to awareness and to be able to gaze upon a well-tended garden. To hear the babbling flow of water uh, echoing pleasantly through the underground. Softness and gentleness are not lost upon us. Do you understand? I guess I can appreciate that. Was there anything you had in mind uh, that would be... That's the word I'm looking for. Character. That would be something that you would want as payment. Anything in particular? I need a few things. We need a few things. First, let's be clear that if we bend our efforts to helping you expand um, or to helping you move to a chambers which you might be adjacent to our traveling uh, tunnels. I need you to agree that not your living quarters, not your labs, but we might overlap occasionally in certain spaces, such as storerooms and uh, 
tunnel systems where you might pack some of your leftovers. And you will not object when I or my clan travel through them. Does, do we have that understanding? I think we can agree to that. And the second thing... We struggle um, with getting mortals to help expand our... using their industrious construction efforts um, to beautify and enhance um, our realms. The delving of brick to expand the great sewer, uh, the foundations of the great aqueducts that supply water, uh, and extra, a few extra carving pieces to go into fountains may be liberated. We need your promise that you will help persuade your own patron to support our cause when we ask for this help. I'll certainly put that forth uh, to them. If you promise and deliver that on your... that you will at least make the effort, a sincere effort, uh, then I believe we can come to an agreement because... Oh, and one last thing. Do not leave your shared spaces to go exploring in our uh, private areas, just as we would never presume to violate your labs or your um, experiments or your sleeping quarters. Definitely agree to that. I believe we I... can agree then. Please, I, I believe I interrupted you though. Please go on. That's all right. I was just going to uh, say that uh, um, we certainly um, see it as uh, quite rude to intrude on another's properties without proper permissions. Wonderful. Then we have struck a bargain, for so long as you reside in Rome, we shall respect each other's boundaries in the shared passages that, may, that we may encounter. Uh, we will help you find more room to expand, and you will bend your efforts uh, when asked towards convincing your patron uh, to support our needs in expanding our domains and in, and in beautifying our possessions. I'm happy that we were able to come to an arrangement. Good. He kind of nods. He goes, good, good, good. Uh, now, when your friend uh, Albina is uh, done bargaining over there with uh, Ihamas, uh, would you please direct her my way? Uh, I have business to discuss with her as well. Of course, I will let her know. Good. Um, and just like that, he just he's just gone. Just vanished into the crowd. Um, off to do his own thing. Probably gathering more secrets and listening into more conversations. Probably. Yeah, so Libyan is just going to uh, kind of just turn around and, I don't know, pace. <laughs> Uh, a little bit. Yeah. Anything else that you can think of at this very second that you would like to be doing? Um, not really, no. Alright. Astartus, 
uh, while all this is going on. Um, you are wandering the crowd, um, still reeling, um, trying to process exactly what happened uh, that night a couple of weeks ago. Um, Ardashir departed recently um, on the mission to take uh, the memento back to the uh, land of your birth. And you find yourself uh, wandering around with no one to really talk to. You know, the the warrior, you know, he, he can't really talk about the grief that you feel. He doesn't process it in the same way. Um, to him, your sister fell in glorious fashion, serving the will of Akeem. And what else is there to unlife? Uh, he only wishes that she could have taken more down with her as she died. But obviously you don't feel the same. So, Sorry, I didn't get the last part. Say, obviously the, the Asomite warrior can only provide you little comfort. Um, he sees your sister as a warrior. Um, who died in the doing her duty, um, not as a creature who did not deserve her fate. So, it's still, it's a very rough, like, you've not really had a lot of comfort. Uh, you're still trying to process what happened. So, you are wondering in the crowd, all these thoughts broiling in your mind. What are you, you thinking? What would you like to do? I really want to find someone or something to distract my mind, take my mind off these awful thoughts that I'm having. Alright. So. Go on. So, oh, no, please go on. If you had an idea, I would love to hear it. I was the if I can find any familiar faces, get in a conversation with them. Anything, just take my mind off what I'm thinking at the moment. Uh, there are many familiar faces here. You've been in Rome for quite a long time, even if, though you, you somewhat have kept to yourself. Um, but there are others, there are faces you know by sight. Um, Valeranius is here, the Fat Ventru. Um, Alethia is here, as, as expected that she would be at such a thing. Um, Alexander, of course, is here. Bester is here. Uh, all the movers and shakers. Crethius, um, Childa of Mithros is here. Mithros is here. Um, moving through the crowds. Many and many a venerable canite. Uh, and, of course, Princeps Camillus is here with um, the other sinners. He does ha seem to have a crowd around him. Um, young sinners just stepping foot onto the path. Uh, he is uh, very deeply engaged, as you can see. He's got a crowd around him, holding forth on something. It's too noisy for you to hear exactly what he's talking about. But uh, he has a very rapt crowd, um, listening to his every word. Then I will approach and just listen, see if I can actually listen to what he's telling them. I... He's... Holding forth a sermon on the joys of uh, of what it means to only be beholden to yourself. Hey, he's talking. You guys. Once I was new, young, just as yourselves. My sire guided me to his road. Took me. Place the chains of uh, duty and honor to bind me to his service. It took me many and many a year to free myself of those thoughts. And now, you see before you one who has is here and is speaking to you only because I desire to do so. 
not because duty compels me or I really want to hear what you have to say. I speak to you because I want to speak to you. Not because I'm trying to be polite or anything like that. The freedom of knowing wholly and solely that I do what I do because I only wish to do it. It is unlike anything that can be described until you experience it for yourself. And, and people are, are like nodding, you know, as, as he continues the sermon. Um, and he gives a, a story, an example of um, what someone can do. And he says, well, speaking, speaking of this story, um, he kind of gives a signal. And you hear somebody ringing a bell. Ding, 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 ding. And uh, a guy named uh, Servus Marius Postulus, the Nosferatu, enters. He's dressed in a robe and crown and marked with the status of the Flaminus Florialis, the priest of Florial, Flor the, the Florialia. Uh, everybody kind of gets quiet. He gets right in the center of the sand pit, the gladiator arena. And he says, Hear ye, all gathered here tonight, under the light of the goddess Florialia, the herald of the spring flowers, and he pulls a flower out of nowhere, and the spring flowers, and then he rubs his stomach suggestively. Um, we gathered here to pay homage to her and to the city, under the wise guidance of our Peter Petre, and he gestures to uh, Camillus, under the advice of our senate, under the watchful eyes of the gods, may we ever prosper and multiply. Let the games begin. And the bell begins to ring again. There's a very raucous applause. Everyone applauds. And uh, the crowd begins to part as uh, some men kind of you know, push, their, push the crowd apart. And you see a line of obvious prostitutes being brought in. Um, span the spectrum of young and old, large and small. Uh, Members from every race all over the Republic. Uh, there's light women and dark women, brown women, women of somewhere in between. You could even think you might see a couple of male youths in here. Slight, not yet grown as their adult frames. And uh, so they're all kind of standing loosely grouped in the middle. And Camilla steps up and he says, In the first event of the festival gathered before you today, we have a selection of our prostitutes from my city. Here they are, and all of them with their own free will. The victor today will defeat two challenges. First, they must eliminate their rivals on the, on the sand. The second is to conquer the king of the bedroom. And uh, everyone kind of laughs and applauds. Their prize shall be a bag of gold, enough to buy freedom if they are a slave, a house, service of their own, and a fine life. And he holds out a pretty hefty bag. Um, says, I also welcome you all to submit a challenger for the games tomorrow night. My dearest and close beloved Drusilla Euphemia will take the names and see to the order. The victor of the combat of the servants will earn for his master, and he kind of looks around at it. a pregnant pause, the right to embrace a chilled. And the, everyone like goes off, woo, yeah! Clap, 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 clap. Um, so then now, make room for the contestants. Everyone back away. Prepare yourself, for the combat will soon begin. A um, few servants immediately begin tossing makeshift weapons, shields, bits of armor onto the sand, and then they, people, the contestants are like grabbing at them, trying to outfit themselves. And meanwhile, betting uh, immediately starts amongst all the bystanders, um, trying to figure out who's going to win. People are, are laying odds, and uh, bets are being made. So you got about 10 minutes of game time uh, as people are outfitting themselves before the contest is going to begin. If you guys are wanting to make a, make bets or uh, um, maybe try to understand why Camillus is so excited about this.
Anybody? Alpna has no interest in the making bad spot, and she figures that mm, Camilla, Camilla is likely excited on this because it provides him not only a good opportunity to be a, make a show as a good host to earn some goodwill, but also the right to see each other allows him to offer something without actually losing anything himself. Uh, very astute observation there. Very, very astute. Uh, um, that also reminds me, Albina. As you're looking around and, and you think about that, I need you to make a, a uh, wits plus politics roll. At uh, difficulty six. Out of character, I think the only thing Labiena would even be interested in even thinking about is rather than trying to bet on who's going to win, she'd probably consider betting on who she thinks might lose or possibly lose their life. <laughs> interested in getting her hands on the bodies. Exactly. More test subjects. Yes, please. <laughs> Uh, there's no lack of those for you. Uh, Rome is life is cheap. Death is even cheaper. Uh, I would imagine you're gonna follow every wound and every blow with the uh, utmost attention. Yep, exactly. Yeah, so you hear people offering trivial boons. Um, somebody's going around, there's about three or four people offering odds. Um, uh, people are betting, oh, I'm going to pick I'm gonna pick this great big woman here to, to be the winner. Uh, somebody says, I think this person's going to be uh, the second to last one left. Um, so, yeah, there's a bunch of people kind of going around taking bets. And uh, money is changing hands. Tr um, people are offering trivial boons. Uh so on and so forth. Albano, two successes, that's enough. You realize there are so many vampires here. And this cannot, this isn't, you know, this isn't even close to all of them. Because there, there's got to be a ton of the immigrants and the, the younglings, and of course, all the ones that are rebelling that aren't here. And you realize your sire being the scourge, even though it was presented as a punishment. Is still necessary. Somebody has to be here to thin the crowd, to thin out the undesirables. It's a necessary role. Um, keep, keep the younglings that get lost in line, or keep them dead to be more precise. Exactly. To keep, even with as cheap as life in Rome is, and the, the constant influx of slaves, and somebody. If, if there isn't a function here to take out, to, to weed out the uh, weaklings, to thin um, the weeds, the weaklings would soon overrun the whole city. Not enough blood to go around. Not, not so much there's not enough blood, but eventually... But there's got to be a tipping point. Yes, it would be too much attention, and it would also mean that there would be not enough. The prince would have to be more careful when he grants the rights to embrace. Ex yes, exactly. Take an experience point towards politics. He might not have been able to do what he's doing tonight. Right, um, Astartes, how about you? I'm going to stay near the prince and watch the show. Maybe get a little bit closer that I might be able to speak right. to him during the entertainment, if it's possible. Um, it's not going to be possible because you're going to be intercepted by a La Sombra named Anconia Messalinia. Now, La, um, Albina, Anconia is... An embarrassment to the La Sombra. Um, 
she is very much a somebody who like every time she shows up you guys are like oh god no not this one why can't we just get rid of her oh man um why haven't the cost of shadows already assigned someone to take her down exactly she has too much influence and power but she's a freaking embarrassment because she's very not la sombra ish la sombra um she's very famous for writing very incredibly salacious poetry um and her and marius have teamed up on several plays that skewer uh, a lot of vampires and have made a lot of canines incredibly angry because they'll very couch them in very careful language hire people to, to do them on the street corners near these canines havens to make fun of them and it drives them crazy because they're just skirting under the line of maintaining the silence of the blood but every time they walk out of their havens and they hear or see somebody performing this play it's just driving them wild and Camilla thinks it's hilarious. And if one of those vampires ends up losing his school and going into a frenzy, well, that's a good excuse to get a blood hunt on them. Exactly. So they, there's nothing they can do about it. Um, all they can do is try to kill whoever's doing the play, and then in a couple of months, somebody else pops up who has been learned and paid and trained to do it, and uh, you know some other street performer. <laughs> and, and it's driving them crazy. And she's doing it just to because she thinks it's funny, because it's pleasurable to her. She's not doing it to get power um, or any or for any other other reason. She's doing it because it's hilarious. She's trolling them. <laughs> I hope she gets to survive until the age of computers. So, um, she sees Astartes, um, kind of edging in, and she comes up and, like, takes your arm, uh, and she is not subtle. She presses her side and her, you know, chest up to you, and let me find her picture, and I'll put her on the Discord, so that you guys can, it'll remind you what she looks like. And while I'm thinking about it, I'll pop it up on the OBS. Yeah, so she sidles up to you, and uh, she like, grabs your arm and just like push, pulls it against her. She's very touchy-feely. Um, she enjoys um, pleasure. Uh, she says, oh, oh dear. I see... Uh, to you here, young Astartes, so... Oh. And... So lonely. Would you, would you enjoy the pleasure of my company, please? I lose myself a little in the feelings. And I answer, of course, with my eyes closed. Oh, good, wonderful. It's been so long since I had a handsome, strapping young man like yourself. And uh, you are indeed handsome. Uh, she says, are you enjoying the show? I find it hard to find enjoyment these nights, but it's not bad. I know you. We spoke once a long time ago. And I remember. I remember you. Ah, uh, so, yes. What brings you What brings you to stand so close to my love? What brings you to edge yourself into the crowd, one that you would normally avoid. 
I was listening to the first season speaking about the tenants of the roads that you walk. And I remember the earlier days when we spoke about it at length. So I was, and the curiosity started burning in me again about it. I was just listening to what he was telling, see if I can find anything enjoyable. Perhaps you wonder why we find such things enjoyable, or what purpose does it serve? Is that perhaps a better question? Yes. What do you guys find job about, about having a couple of mortals fighting each other? All things revolve around freedom. Even the mortals will tell you that. We thrill to the sight of men and women exalting in their own abilities, pushing themselves in ways they thought they could never do. All to throw off the shackles that bind them. You have your own shackles, I believe. And I just smile at that comment. Such things... Can you ever truly... To... No, let me, let me start that again. There is a beast in all of us. One that glories in violence and bloodshed and... Pleasure. Sensation in life and death. It is all the feelings that, and she gestures broadly, they repress. Walking around, do you think they feel the thrill of uh, the, spectate, the spectation that we're about to see? Do you think they feel it as viscerally as we do? And that's, that's, her expression makes it clear that's not rhetorical. She she wants an answer. No, I believe they're just simulating it. They're not actually feeling it. Like I'm observing you are feeling it. Or the first season, as I spoke with passion. You're a natural. You, you've already said it yourself. There is no passion in what they do. They have repressed all of it. There's no joy, uh, no fear. They exist only in a state of control. They use the shackles of their own slavery to hold true feelings and joy in a state because they're afraid. They fear. We do not fear what's about to happen. Tell me, if one of your brothers were here, would they be... How would they feel right now? Depending on how indoctrinated they are, because sadly our clan is not very open to other ways of thinking, so they might have difficulty with a lot of the things that is happening around here at this moment. She actually smiles. It's 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 funny you should use that word. And an indoctrination. They have assimilated thinking that is not their own. They repress their true selves to somebody else's thought. It's mental slavery. And she, she's 
looking at your face to judge your reaction. She literally just called you a slave. I look at her straight in the eye and I smile a little bit. Until a couple of weeks ago, I was also one of those slaves, as you called her. But lately, I've been found myself questioning what was the meaning of, of it all? What's the meaning of this own life that I was brought into just to suffer in day to day, night to night, and then end in that like you never even mattered? Nobody to remember you in the long run? Um, she is exhibiting genuine pleasure. You see, with such little guidance, already you have hit upon the truth. There is only one point in unlife. Only one. To serve yourself. If you dedicate yourself at somebody else's whim are you truly serving yourself are you dedicated are you truly dedicated because somebody's making you do it that's a sad thing about uh, us most of the times we are forced to do something we do not even realize that we are not even given the choice in the matter. So do you have an alternative for me? Enlighten me like you did once did all those years ago. Stay by my side tonight. We will, I will introduce you to what it means to know pleasure and what pleasure truly means beyond the physical, beyond, oh, that was nice. What it means to introduce your beast to sensations that you have denied it for hundreds of years. Well then, lead the way. Um, all right. At this point, you guys have had uh, opportunities to place bets. If you're going to place bets, uh, the contestants have outfitted themselves. Uh, you see, it's a motley crew. Um, somebody rings the bell and says, "Begin!" And immediately, there's a group fight. You see, uh, people getting back to back uh, fighting. There's two on one fights. There's probably twenty people. In the middle, going at it. Um, you see one person swing a makeshift club and like teeth go flying out. Boom! And a string of blood. There's crack of bone. Um, people are screaming, shouting. The whole crowd is cheering. Um, of more importance uh, to some of you might be who's not cheering. Who's not um, enjoying this. Um, Camillus, of course, is greatly enjoying the spectacle. Um, the whole fight is over in about, um, in somewhat less than 10 minutes. After about five minutes, everybody slows down. They're panning, breathing heavy. <sighs> okay, their arms are all tired. And there's like four people, um, kind of eyeing each other, uh, around the, in the side, the circle of bodies. And um, the fighting slows down as, as people are mentally trying to like, hey, you're going to team up with me? You know, hey, well, two on one this person or three on one this person. And uh, it's interesting, the whole mental game that goes on. These, these non-fighters. Uh, finally, the, the fight is over. And a middle-aged woman... Uh, is still standing. She stands tall over the pile of hurt and unconscious body. She's a bit bloody. Uh, she's missing a tooth. Um, she's got a, a bit of uh, shoulder armor and arm armor on, um, but otherwise she's completely naked. She's got a, 
a club in her hand. Um, she's got stretch marks from childbirth. And uh, she holds her trembling arm up uh, and she strikes a pose that she has won. And uh, Camilla steps up and he says, yes, yes, congratulations. Congratulations, praise her. And there's a clapping and some people throw coins um, at her to pick up. And he says, a mother stands victorious over those that would take from her from her children. And there's a couple of groans. Um, the people on the sand are like, oh, God, oh, it hurts. Ugh. Some servants come in and begin dragging the bodies out of the way. And he says, and now for the second part of the challenge. Uh, the servants return. They put a wooden box uh, on the sand and they grab her and they put her down face down on the box. And they put the prize money right in front of her face. And then you hear a roar, roar as somebody leaves a, bi a huge fucking lion in. So it's now for the second part of the challenge. All she has to do is endure and the prize is hers. Now, this isn't that kind of game. I'm not going to discuss or describe what goes on here. Use your imagination. Um, it's quite disgusting, but the, uh, Camillus is obviously enjoying the spectacle of a prostitute and the king of beasts in the middle of the sand. And uh, there's a lot of, like obvious grossed out faces like this is disgusting how can he enjoy this um going around the room the very high humanity the the young the youngest are kind of like Ugh, oh man I, I what what the hell is going on here I, I don't believe this stuff even the crowd that camillus was preaching to is, is that you can see they're they're a little bit put off um by this spectacle but camillus is exhorting them uh and ancona saying the same thing she does this of her own free will Look at what the spirit can do when it is given the proper motivation. Uh, do not be afraid. Do not turn away. This is what you too can uh, endure anything. So how do you guys react? What's your, what's your reaction to this? Let's start with Albina. How, how, do, you, how do you feel about this? Mm. Alvin does not really see uh, much uh, about what the eye people seem to be grossed out. For her, this is just another monster getting mauled by a lion. Although she also does not take uh, any particular pleasure in it. She, her beast enjoys the sight of blood. Her beast enjoys the screams of pain. Her beast enjoys the suffering that's being uh, caused in front of her. But it's not something that she's reveling in. So, certainly not to the extent that the prince and the other sinners are. Mm. So, she has a... Mm, luckily, just a slight smile on her face as she sees, uh, as she sees uh, what is occurring. Perhaps taking a big, a bre a big uh, breath as the uh, blood sprays as she lets it fill her lungs with the delicious smell. Um, Labiana, how about you? Uh, well, much like the previous spectacle, um, Labiana's obviously once again kind of not fascinated with, you know, the spectacle itself, but, you know, probably more in line with perhaps any kind of small things she can learn about what's actually happening to her right now with the potential f that this uh, woman may in fact die. So obviously, you know, being on the path she's on, like, she certainly lost her ability to be grossed out by such things um, and is just kind of looking at you know, how the lion's claws interact with the woman's uh, skin and... Yeah, so you're uh, anatomically Just... fascinated by what's going on. Anatomically. Exactly. Yeah, this this might be something 
you know, how much punishment can the human body endure? Um, and can that be useful for your studies? Precisely. Yeah, so La Viena comes across like um, a mad scientist looking at a particularly fascinating, you know, mating ritual going on. It's like, interesting, interesting. Um, um, literally just the cerebral aspect of it is uh, uh, it's off-putting to, to somebody who might expect a human emotion to come out of her, but anybody who's seen her face would perhaps understand why she's had to repress such things. Astartus. Um, I need you to make a conscience or, or conviction roll at difficulty six. All right. Um, you managed to justify this in your head uh, uh, of not putting a stop to this behavior. Is she may this person may be willing, but obviously that Camillus did not have to make her do this either. He could easily have afforded to buy her way out of her troubles. Um, just the fact that he has exploited her weakness and her need uh, in such a manner is, is horrific. Uh, to your previous teachings. So how would you justify that to yourself? That that um, that you are not taking action immediately to put a stop to this somehow? I believe I would be more focused on the woman. Her mental strength at the moment. Her fortitude to take all of this for what she believes and what she wants. I will focus more on that aspect. And I will feel that actually intervening in anything would dishonor her attempt to do it. I think that's wonderful. I think that's great reaction um, to it. Uh, and Kona um, is rubbing herself up against you and it's sexually. Um, the blood, the um, everything going on, uh, you can see the light of the beast is kind of dancing in her eyes. She's riding the edge, right? Um, uh, actually, it, it, you, you are close enough to look and, and kind of meet uh, Princep's eyes. He's got the same look, that, that dancing glee um, on his face of, hey, this is amazing. Anybody who is not embracing the fullness of this experience is depriving themselves of a joyous moment. But all things must come to an end. Eventually the lion is pulled off and um, a couple of medics come out uh, some medicus and take her to get her wounds treated. Um, Camille steps up. Yes, congratulations, everyone. Uh, give her your applause and your your uh, greetings. Uh, let her know that you have appreciate her sacrifice tonight for your entertainment. Everyone, you'll see her off magnificently. And a lot of applause and uh, cheering and um, people congratulating her, even though she's basically unconscious. Um, as she's carried off the sand, the lion is let out. Uh, he says, and now, everyone, enjoy yourselves the rest of tonight. Tomorrow night, the tournament begins one hour after sundown. Uh, rejoin us once more. Uh, so, Amelia, uh, or not, Anconia, takes you, uh, Astartus, um, to a private room and gets busy. Let's put it like that. Uh, she uses her body and her, uh, and her words to express, um, the joy of what just happened. 
Uh, do you go along with this, or are you kind of freaked out? I believe at this moment I would go along with it, just to take my mind off what was I was thinking earlier. Because up to this moment, everything that happened actually took my mind off what I was, the dark thoughts that I was having. So I will go along with it. Um, she is doing her best um, through the use of strategic bites and playful talk and caresses. And she's trying to yeah, um, arouse feelings in you that you've had to repress due to your path and your job. Um, your chosen uh, field of endeavor. Um, and she is, as it turns out, quite good at it. Um, she is seducing you physically and mentally uh, through the use of exciting your beast. Um, as you are in a vulnerable emotional state, it allows this to happen. I'm going to give you the choice. Do you wish to lose a dot of your road? Um, or would you like to make a self-control roll to not have your beast dragged out of you and played with um, in such a physical, sensual manner? I believe as I'm actually going along with the flow, I'm letting loose just go yeah. with the flow so right I think we'll lose the dot then yes lose the dot she spends the entirety of the rest of the night you guys will actually sleep together um in this private guarded room um she spends the night um toying with you uh satisfying you um and herself and doing all manner of things in, in ways and things that you had thought lost, all manner of sensation you had thought no longer existed in your body and your mind. And she reawakens it. Um, Albina, you must depart with Ihamis, and um, he gathers a one of his trusted retainers, and they um, go and wake up this man, and to bring him to you, the man that you are renting. Uh, you don't have much time. You have only a few hours to uh, teach him the things that you wish to teach him and do the things you wish to do to prep him for his combat. Mm -hmm. She'll accompany him, uh, him to the mount. And she's going to be trying to give him a basic rundown of what is expected of him. Um, mm. Assuming that their minds are going to, uh, assuming that his mind is going to be wiped after the event, she's going to proceed to breach a masquerade with him by telling him of the vampire powers that he's going to be receiving and give him a bit of instructions on how to use them on during the fight. Okay, um, let's see how he reacts. Uh, he takes it in stride. He's just like, okay, okay, well, you know, I've seen stranger things happen. <laughs> I fought naked men on the battlefield, you know, th th this is okay. Um... So, what do I have to do? You are going to be expected to fight against other fighters that are likewise that like yourself, who have imbibed the blood of the Domitors and have access to limited supernatural abilities. You are expected to win, or the very least, not to die. Okay, well, um... Can you give me a little bit of practice or something so I, you know, not like doing this first thing tomorrow? Of course. Awesome. All right, uh, so what do I got to do? You tell me. She's going to proceed to share her blood with him. All right. Um, 
he pulls it. It's a the kind of disgusted face at first, and he's like, "That's kind of good. I, I feel like energized. Like, yeah, I feel kind of nice." Then she's going to proceed to look around to hand him some form of weapon. Uh, all right, yeah, you've got him sitting around, uh, obviously. Uh, uh, he he grabs it, uh, a practice gladius, let's say, dulled, swings it around. He's like, so, um, you know, how do I access these powers? The blood we feel. Can you feel it running within your veins? Can you feel it? The strength within you. Uh, Can you feel my divinity within you? Not really, but you know, maybe I, I don't know. Uh, I've never done this before, so I don't know. May, maybe I need like a, a boost or you know uh, something to draw it out. She looks. She turns around for a second, and this, then she's going to proceed to. Turn back on him and strike him across the face. All right. Yeah, you open hand slap him. Whack! And he's like... And he realizes, okay, we're doing this. And he takes after you, and he's pretty skilled. He's, he's uh, not bad. You'd say um, he's at least better than you are in terms of raw melee ability. Um, Uh, and he kind of whacks you a couple of times as you keep smacking him, and he's getting angrier and angrier. Um, and then suddenly his strikes start to hurt a little more. Um, they're actually inflicting a little bit of bashing damage on you, so um, you've been kind of letting him hit you so that he'd get you know kind of mad as he sees his his dull wax aren't doing anything to you. And as he figures out how to access his potents, how they actually starts to work. Um, the blows start to actually hurt a little more. So you, you can actually feel him like, okay, now he's, he, the potence is starting to, to work. He's starting to get it. She's then going to proceed to start uh, moving the shadows around in a way to try to cover his eyes to eyes to try to blind him. Try to force him to try to move them back himself. Um, so he begins to access his full melee skill. Um, do you do me a favor and roll your stamina. Uh, with fortitude, or just yeah, yeah, with fortitude. Yeah, so he hits you hard right across the face just comes around and it cl and it, the the he kind of gets a little bit pissed it's the, the blood of the 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 blood actually for the first time arousing his beast a little bit and cuz you know ghouls get a little impulsive sometimes cuz they do get a little bit of that beast in them and as the the shadows begin blinding him and he starts hitting harder and harder and he starts getting more serious about it um and he finally like kind of ducks out of the way it kind of swats at the shadows across his face, and he just looks at you, and he just turns the blade edge on, if forgetting for an instance it's dull, and hits you right across the side of the neck, just co-whap! Um, and your uh, vampiric fortitude and skin, just it just kind of bounces off of you. Um, and you realize, okay, now he's getting serious, and now he's actually trying to hurt you. Um, so now that he's, he's really feeling it, he's really got it. She looks pleased as she gets hit. She looks so pleased that she's going to proceed to stop him. She's going to look around for an uh, actual bladed weapon. Yeah, you've got those, for sure. She's going to tell him to toss away that blunt uh, training weapon that he has, and she's going to give him the, the piercing one. He, he kind of does the, you know, circle it with his wrist, checks it out a couple of times. He's like, are you sure? Will you stop when you have pierced my skin? 
if you fail to pierce my skin until the crack of dawn, then you are useless to me. Right. Uh, give me an initiative roll. Uh, unless you're just gonna like endure, then you don't have to roll initiative. Wow, you rolled awesome. Awesome. All right, well, in the actual fight, you go first. She's going to proceed to punch him, to try to not punch him, but like an uh, open-handed slap. Yeah, so uh, you're you're pulling the blow. You're, you're just trying to get him mad, right? Yeah, you're trying to, to rile him up. So, I'm yeah, he, to... he's doing the whole, like, your fist comes in, and he kind of, like, raises his shoulder to protect. Like, he instinctively is raising a shield that he doesn't have. Um, and he's taking these slaps on his shoulder and his arm and his face as you're like, whack, come on, come on, whack. And, uh, he finally, all right. And he takes after you, um, and you see the blade weave around your face a little bit, um, as he takes a, uh, called shot going for your face. Uh, which is a hit, two successes, because he doesn't have a specialty. So we're going to say four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three. Soak four lethal, please. Wow. Yeah, the edge of the blade just bounces off. Um, it, like, it slides right across your the skin of your face. Like the tip just goes... And um, he can see your your fortitude um, looks like crumbled stone, just kind of like cracks for a second, and then is whole again. And what uh, that was a great blow, but he couldn't couldn't hurt you. So what do you what do you do? She's going to knee in the balls. Um, all right, uh, Dex brawl. Called shot, uh, diff eight. You kick him right in the right in the nutsack. Let me make this very clear. Every time that you fail, I'm going to hurt you a lot. This is only the beginning. So I suggest you start to succeed quickly. Okay. Um, he enters a type of frenzy, um, because he's not used to controlling his beast right now, and he just kind of goes berserk. Um, and he's taking multiple actions against you. Um, so, uh, the called shot is gone, he's taking three actions. This is diff seven. Oh, botch. Um, he just stands up Rost! and stumbles. Uh, just completely whiffs, misses you, goes stumbling. And, and so his next action is going to be at a plus one difficulty. So it's diff nine, diff nine. Diff ten. All right. Th um, three straight wild, just wild swings. Just miss, miss, miss. Like, you don't even barely have to move your, your torso out of the way. Um, and he just whiffs you wildly, stumbling over the, the little training area. Um, uh, you, you could be toying with him at the moment. You're completely in charge here. She shakes her head as she, as she fails to connect with her with even of his attacks, and she proceeds to try to knee him on the stomach. All right. Um, this is just diff six. Dex brawl. Yeah, you... As he, his last shot, he kind of whiffs you again, and you just raise your knee and whack right in the solar plexus. <laughs> Uh, uh, again, his you feel he's actually got really strong abs, good strong core. He's like, oh, uh, uh, 
And uh, it's not enough to shake him out of his rage, though. So it, he kind of bounces off and recenters on you and then uh, tries again. Uh, this time he hits. Misses. Misses. Um, no damage. So once again, three wild strikes. First one had a chance, but can't even penetrate your can't even penetrate your normal skin stamina. Just boom, nothing. She's going to hit him in the face with the palm of her hand, trying to break his yeah. nose. Um, so this is going to continue all night long until he gets it. Uh, he emerges from this with a black eye. Um, you've got to reset his nose. So you like you get Labienda to grab his nose and you know straighten it back out. Um, so he's going to enter the tournament with a big puffy face and black eye. Um, he's got to have bruises on his stomach. His balls hurt all day long. Uh, going to have bruises across his forearms where you, where you just like were light, lightly slapping at him. Um, it took a couple hours for him to, to get around to, to, to finally you know penetrate and just give you a minor nick. And he finally is like, just like, oh, God, so tired. Oh, God. Is everybody going to be this tough? <sighs> no. At least they shouldn't be. But, well, a bit of cheating on the side. It has never been something, it's not something uncommon. You might find yourself facing... Or the the ghost, or the ghost that had the opportunity to experience millennia of warfare, and that had this experience to the chance to experience millennia of honing the powers granted to them. Well, you might want to get me some armor then. I own it. I will arrange for everything to be everything possible to be delivered to you. Okay. Well, I need some sleep and some food and uh, some wine and water. Is uh, if I'm going to be fighting all night tomorrow night, it's going to be going to be a long day. Are you sure that's self-provided? As well as plenty of blood to keep you going. Um, so yeah, he uh, he sits down and he um, just puts the the wine skin on his face because uh, it's as cold as it can possibly be, which is not that cold because there's no ice. Uh, a little bit, of, but as much chilliness as he can get on his face to help with the swelling, he'll do. Um, uh, Labiana, anything you would like to do the rest of the night before the tournament? Um, I'll be honest, nothing that I can immediately think of off the top of my head. Alright, yeah, so you go back to Fazio, let her know what, you, what you've learned, and go back to a few more experiments. And she's like, hey, great, good job. I, I, I totally agree with that deal. I think that's awesome. Mostly because she doesn't actually have to do much. She can just focus on studies. <laughs> yeah, that's it. She's like, all right. Next night, you guys mark a blood point off. Um, everybody heads to the uh, bathhouse getting ready for the uh, tournament. Um, if you wanted to go. If not, you don't have to. Um, Astartes, you of course wake up at the bathhouse, um, entangled in the um, dead arms of uh, Anconia Messalina. 
And she kind of smiles. She's like, mm, lover boy, uh, I'm going to have to write you some poetry to, to commemorate that session. And I would start laughing really hard because it was the first night that I actually felt something in a very long time. Right. Um, I would, yep, go ahead, please. No, I would just thank her for the night and say that we really need to re repeat that at some time. Um, she, no, she just says, no, sooner rather than later. Uh, she, uh, you know, you are seen out, you get a chance to go back to the, uh, to your haven, get, you know, cleaned up, go to a change. Of course, the bathhouse is right there, so you can wash yourself off and, and everything before, before leaving. And, uh, You, of course, have the next night completely free. You can come back for the tournament. You can do whatever it is you feel you need to do. Um, Labiana, you have uh, brought your your uh, rented servant. Um, he's got some uh, light leather armor on that uh, he came with. Uh, he's got a little bit of the uh, that shoulder armor that you see that gladiators sometimes wear. Um, and, Outram, I believe. and you guys found him a, uh, uh, a tower shield. So he's got his, uh, gladius tower shield, a little bit of shoulder armor, um, and that, that helmet that the, uh, uh, Sabine gladiator, Sabine style gladiators wear. Uh, there's... And there's four at least. We're going to see how many. Ah, so there's only six. Uh, glad Six uh, contenders there, apparently, at the moment. And they do the math, and they're like, uh, uh, come on now, there should be two more. We need two more to make it interesting. Two more. They're, they're kind of exhorting people to go get somebody. So they do bring it. Eventually, two more people come in. So there's eight total. They're like, yeah, that makes it nice and even. Nice and even. Uh, any of the other gladiators present uh, know about, uh, or the ghouls know about, regular ghouls that, she, that might have come in contact with while dealing with other vampires? Uh, one of them is uh, belongs to Valerinius, because he that's what he does, is he is uh, very big into the Ludi. Um... You're not sure about the rest of them. Um, not really a lot that you've seen, you know, around. Uh, a lot of them are reluctant to waste a valuable ghoul. Because not so much that they care about the ghoul, um, but that's effort. They care they don't, about the it's they effort care. they don't want to have to repeat. They're like, oh, man, if I lost a guy, I'd have to retrain him, and so on and so forth, and... You know, oh, well. so they, uh, uh, you know, there's not a lot of, of bodies apparently. Uh, uh, some there's some people who are disappointed. They thought there'd be a lot more, but no, they 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 got just enough for eight. That there's gonna be uh, three rounds. Of course, single elimination, three rounds. Does she see the opportunity to shoot? I'm sorry, say that again? The opportunity to cheat. I still didn't catch it. All right. So, while everybody's getting ready and they're... Mm, how would you cheat? Those the gladiators are kept in separate rooms by themselves? Or are they all, like, kept together? Um... They're kept... Uh kind of with their their owners quote unquote oh. um unless you like want them to sit in which case there's like a little section of wall where they can just kind of sit um not many people are gonna uh do cheating too much 
Mm -hmm. Should not be able to, as she's, as she's guiding her own gladiator along, should not be able to meet eyes with one of the other gladiators and try to whisper a command to him. Um, Without they will. Somebody, okay. Uh, I need you to roll your manipulation plus subterfuge to get close. Uh, because people are going to be watching. Uh, especially the uh, Malkavian, who is going to roll her perception plus subterfuge plus her auspex rating. Preferably doing that to the Valeronius one, because fuck Valeronius. Okay. Man, if she didn't have specialties, uh, she'd have been fucked, because I just rolled three ones. <laughs> but also three tens. Um, yeah, here's the question. Does she care? Uh, I would like you to roll your perception um, plus politics. Can I zero power on this? Uh, yeah, because you were like, okay, I got to get close. I got to do it with nobody watching. Uh, and you, you're like super concentrating on it. So yeah, I think a willpower could be appropriate. Oh, there you go. You see her see you do this, but she doesn't stop you. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to give her a subtle nod. I, as in, we will talk later. All right. Um, so, what command do you do you sidle up and whisper to him? I'm going to give him the command to lose his gear. Lose his gear. Yes. Okay. Um, I'm not even going to make you roll that. Uh, he just kind of okay. He stands up, takes his armor off, and sets his stuff down, and sits and sits down right next to it. Damn it! Um, Valerius kind of sees it. You walk away, and he, he's chatting. He's got his back to you, and uh, somebody like taps his arm, and he turns around, and sees it, and he's like, he gets this look on his face, like, what the fuck? Walks over and he's like, hey, what are you doing? Get up, get dressed, you gotta get ready. And, he, and he, he's like, okay, well, it seemed like a good idea. And he stands up and gets dressed again. Damn it. Um, yeah, everybody else, the, the guy that like tapped his arm is kind of snickering. Like, dude, you entered an idiot in, in this contest. Like, you're, you're foolish. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you did embarrass him a little bit. He's my victories. <laughs> um, all right. As as you guys are talking and and you know discussing things, um, uh, Albana, you feel a uh, a poke at your butt. Shit, turns to look. There's nobody there, and then you feel a poke on your side. She's going to extend her arm, trying to grab a little bit poking at her. Right, so you swing your arm out, and your wrist is caught, and it feels like it's caught in a vice. Whatever just grabbed your arm is not letting go, and it is below your line of sight. It is shorter than you are. Who are you? Um, so you turn to look at him, I assume? Yes. Um, you see a small form, um, a little bit shorter than you are, about, about chest height on you. Um... With he's wearing cheap, uh, a very cheap clothing, but it's like a big long cape. It's got a hood over his eyes, and the hand that's grabbing your wrist is spindly fingers, very deformed, um, grayish looking skin with wrinkles on it, and like scraggly, dirty nails. Um, and 
they it, it just like grabs your hand and it just kind of put, puts your hand down and uh, uh, it just starts laughing and you recognize immediately the voice of Redolinius. You've you've heard and talked to him before and it's unmistakable. Redolinius, having fun with me, are you? Well, not really me, but, uh, and I wouldn't really classify this as fun, because, uh, you know, negotiating with Lysambra is always a tricky business, but, uh, as you know, uh, all of the Nosferatu see me as their leader, and that includes Telecles. Yes. Telecles is, uh, <clears throat> how can I put this? Uh, you're a priestess of shadow here to slither between the darkness and light you know, among a flock of your own company. Telecles is an admirable Nosferatu and a most puissant adherent to the Via Viste. And uh, he came to me and explained to me that you have asked him about providing you with a taste of what it means to be a follower of the road. Have you been enjoying it? It has been enlightening. I never been... I always felt the beast, but I never felt working alongside the beast like I did when I was, I was under his tutelage. Um, he kind of takes you off to the side. He says, So, I need to ask you, What's your purpose in attracting his attention? Or is this something you truly seek to know, his road? I do seek to know of it. Although, if you are asking if I seek to have him mentor me in a change of road, that's not the case. I see. Well, in that case, what are you willing to provide us in return for his time? Uh, everything that he's done so far, he did... Because he wanted to. Everything that's to be done in the future is to be paid for. And why is she not the one to negotiate with me? Because he doesn't negotiate, I do. Do she know that you are here doing this? Well, if you were paying attention, I've already explained that I am his superior in every way. And he kind of growls a little bit. Um, what's your current willpower? My current willpower is five. Five. Um, yeah, let's see. Do, 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 do. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, with eight successes... Um, he lets this little growl go out. Um, and you realize you're talking to a motherfucking Elder Nosferatu um, on the Eternal Senate. He does not take these things lightly. Um, he rolled intimidation extremely well. Nothing immediately backs down as she finds herself looking downwards, avoiding meeting his gaze. Even perhaps uh, slightly lowering her posture a little bit, bending her knees slightly. She tries to be smaller, tries to appear to not be worth his time as a way to try to avoid attracting his attention. Yes, I understand. You need to look after the well being of your clan. I am willing to provide my services to the clan of Ferratu as a repayment for the services of Telaclis. What are you willing to provide us? He has... Telecles himself has simple needs, as befits his road, and the rest of us are not so lucky. Of course. I can provide you and your clan with either services, blood, or resources. What is the... I am not in touch with the Nosferatu's current movements in the city. I'm not in touch with what the current plans 
curry on the ground. What are the ones that, what kind of services would be most required? I propose a exchange. Telecles is going to take you tomorrow night on a hunt. A hunt of all followers of the Via Biste. A gathering. One that's rare. It shall be a chance for you to see brotherhood among the road. I feel in return that it is only fair that you educate a member of our clan about your own road, of what it means to be uh, to walk the path that you walk. Very well. Once I have uh, fulfilled uh, this hunting, this hunting party tonight, this gathering, send to me the one that you like to be instructed in the methods of the road of the abuse. He nods. He nods. I believe that is acceptable. I hope you have success with your endeavor tonight. Uh, I shall be watching the contest with great interest. Have you been? Have you had the opportunity to place your own uh, gladiator in this contest, or are you going to be a spectator? Oh no, no, we do not bother with such things. Uh, we're just going to spectate. Then I hope mine is able to provide amusement to you. Um, he, he, he nods at one of the others. He goes, he goes, for my money, I'm betting on Bester School. Why? Why he's the favorite? I didn't say he was my favorite. I said, uh, I said I'm betting on him. Fair enough. Then I hope you are not going to be too disappointed once you lose your money. Ah, uh, he just laughs. It's all in good fun for me. And he turns around and walks away. Uh, he finished with you for the night. Allowing you to get back to your own plans and schemes. <laughs> she goes over to resuming her night. And waiting for the beginnings of the gladiatorial games. Right. Um, eventually they do call the start of the uh, tournament and everybody gathers around. Uh, they have drawn random brackets. Uh, then they go first. So let's see, you're is going to be number one and uh, Valerianus is going to be number t uh, two. So, all right, Valeranius is first, and against somebody else. Um, I'm going to say Bester's is eight. All right, so you are going up against whoever number four is, and I don't really care who it is. Um, the tournament begins. Um, Valeranius' ghoul is... Uh, do me a favor, Albana. Roll a roll six d ten. One two three four three one two three 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 and three. Uh, first round is even. Roll again. One and two. All right. Um, Valerianius' ghoul um, gets first blood in. Uh, the batch goes back and forth. Um, you see Valerianius' ghoul is fighting with a net. He has a, a, a net and he's got a knife tucked away that he can grab real quick. So he's using the net to hold the, hold the guy off. And um, every time the guy gets close, he swings the net at his feet and he, had, he has to jump back. Um, Eventually, he pulls a sweet move, and he's going to try to envelop his opponent with the net. So, 
Roll one more time. So one, two, one, two. Nope, even, even Stevens. Roll one more time. One. Oh, with no, he goes to throw the net, and the guy like ducks and comes up underneath and just jams um, his weapon uh, hard into the uh, the side of the ghoul. Um, and you see it like poke through one side of his uh, ribs. It probably goes through a lung. Comes out the backside. <laughs> The guy falls off the sword, um, and Valeradius is uh, humiliated as one of his professional um, gladiators is defeated uh, in about 30 seconds. Uh, maybe, maybe a couple of minutes. Um, so you come up on the second match. Uh, your ghoul has six dice to roll. Uh, your opponent is going to be able to roll... Uh, three plus whatever this number is. All right. Ah, your opponent's not all that fucking skilled, so you got this. All right, roll 6d10 for me. Nope. Um, your guy gets first blood. Uh, he comes in, and he your your guy very, very deftly takes it on the shield, twists... Uh, twist his, his shield that makes the guy's wrist twi uh, twist out of position and just comes in and whoop, puts his blade straight up to the guy's bicep. Ah, and he drops the weapon. Uh, one more round. Uh, you got him. Um, he drops the weapon. The guy goes to scoop it up and uh, your ghoul just... Uh, you see him... Uh, channel that potence, and he just punts this guy right in the face. Boom! Um, a guy goes down, clutching a broken jaw. Uh, uh, uh. Uh, clearly, he is lost. You have advanced to the second round. Uh, now you're fighting the first guy, so six against six. New round. You didn't even take any damage or nothing. You made it look easy. So roll six for me, please. Ah, first strike again goes to your guy. Um, he draws blood across his ribs. Oh, like a sizzle of pain. Oh, and you see him, he hitches his breath a little bit. He's going to lose a dice. Roll one more time. One, two, three. One, two, three. All right, so the fight goes back and forth, back and forth. The guy's kind of protecting his ribs. Um, you're swinging a miss, swinging a miss. They're kicking back and forth. Uh, everybody's really getting into it. These, these guys are obviously skilled, experienced, protecting themselves. Um, you see the wound in the one ghoul side begins to heal. It begins to knit and heal, and, and there's fresh pink skin that's uh, now just bloody from what had been washed off, and he kind of stands up. Uh, at full strength, or a roll again. So, one, two, three. Oh, this time your guy gets injured. Um, and he doesn't really know how to heal. Uh, his sword slips in, uh, passes your, your man's shield, and slides in and slices him across the arm up to the up to the shoulder. Ah, oh, his his uh, shield arm drops as as he's like, oh shit, oh god. Uh, Roll at the uh, roll four dice for me. All right, as your guy, as this guy comes in to attack, um, your man suddenly just like um, instinctively, that instantly, the snap of the fingers, the wound snips shut, boom, and he just blocks it, pushes him away. Last round, whoever wins this one gets a decisive blow. I see one, two, one, two, it's that tied. Roll again. So this is an exciting fight. They're going back and forth, kicking at each other, kicking sand at each other. Oh, that's an amazing roll. And you won. He, uh, 
the guy he finally went for a trick movie, tried to flick some sand up into your into your man's face, and your your guy's experience, he saw it coming, and he just came in and it's like did a back kick, sweeps him off his feet, and then immediately turns his sword and brings the flat of his blade down across the guy's uh, face, just pow, um, shatters his nose, um, maybe broke his eye socket. Uh, La Bien, if you're watching this, you're like, ooh, that was amazing. I need to see that again. I want to see that in instant replay. Um, and he is let off clearly uh, uh, poor for the experience. You man has made it to the finals. Um, it is very clear that uh, Ihamas has uh, provided you with somebody skilled and experienced. He's uh, earning every penny for you. She feels herself getting closer and closer to her prize. Avnes feels herself also growing more excited. She starts cheering loudly. Uh, her pranks come out as she starts very, very out of character for her, becoming more lively even. Right. Um, the last guy to come in is uh, Bester's man. Um, handsome, uh, kind of showboaty a little bit. Uh, walks out on the sand, you know, takes his applause. Uh, he's got very nice armor and stuff on. Um, in the matches that you saw, he is very, very skilled. Um, your man is pretty pretty skilled too, though. Yeah, it may not be as perfect, but it doesn't take much. for, for It only takes one mistake for, one, for your guy to win, to be the victor. All right. The match begins. They begin testing each other a little bit. Uh, you know, Shield clash, clash. Um, you're, the, the guy who, that you're fighting is—he's wielding two blades. He's got a uh, like a trident, short trident in one hand, and a uh, a knife in the other that he's using to catch and uh, twist and catch and twist. So he's gonna roll eight because he's that skilled, and you're rolling six. One, two, three, four. One, two. All right, um, your guy gets injured. Uh, again, same line of attack. He, he catches your uh, guy, he tries to deflect, and he reaches a trident over uh, over top of the shield. And because he's got a little bit of a reach, it kind of digs in right at that shoulder socket and twists a little bit. You see it take a chunk of meat with it as it pulls out. Um, uh, roll one more time, or you're at uh, minus one dice, so roll 5d10. Because he can't heal quite as much now. Uh, you might get this. Nope. Uh, unfortunately, your uh, guy, he can't raise his shield in time. And the spear comes in and uh, whacks him along the side. Let's see. Roll uh, 3d10, please. Uh, roll 4d10. He's got some padded leather uh, on, on his head. So roll 4 and see how much he soaks. So, gonna four, five, six, seven. Okay, yep, he doesn't kill your guy, uh, but it does clang, like, boom, right off his temple, and he goes down to one knee. Um, and uh, Bester's uh, ghoul circles around him, puts the trident across his throat, and puts his knee in, the, in, in your guy's back, and just, like, does the whole, I'm gonna choke, pull your head off with my trident thing. And the guy gives up. You know, I, clearly he lost. But there's a lot of applause, um, a lot of money uh, beginning to change hands, favors beginning to change hands, because nobody thought your rent a ghoul um, would make it nearly so far. <laughs> so um, you clearly have disappointed several people who have betted on you to lose first. She is not pleased with the result, but she's also not going to. She's not. Uh, she's not, not unhappy because she knows that no doubt she might have uh, the success of her goal is also her, uh, so far it's also been her own success so she believes this can be leveraged for her own ambitions in the future and she's not going to find herself uh, having to give up her major boom with Valeronius for uh, Ihamus now um, Ihamus is actually going to seek you out afterwards and um, he, he comes up to you and he says, that's a, a good show, a very good showing. Uh, very pleased that uh, 
Uh, and I'm, in fact, kind of surprised that uh, he made it quite so far. Uh, but I believe you got your money's worth out of it. I did. You provided me a most excellent exp specimen. I am, in fact, so pleased at uh, the result that I am going to wipe your minor boon off. Um, the value that he has now added uh, in the eyes of the many who are observing um, has far exceeded the minor boon that you would have owed me. And therefore, I believe it is uh, only right that you recoup that and we declare it even. That is most magnanimous of you. Are you going to, do you plan to take him, to give him the opportunity to be one of your retainers? I don't know. We're going to find out. We'll see. We'll see if he's suitable or not. I will, uh, I promise not to kill him if you would like to have him later. I'll let you buy him off of me if I decide not to keep him. <laughs> I already have my own current project. But if you do decide to sell him, I might be interested. He was quite a proficient a student on the little time that we had together. Quite a dedicated student in the little time that we had together. Uh, yes, indeed. So, I shall take him and I shall bid you a good night. Um, and a pleasant evening. Um, he uh, takes possession of his ghoul and uh, he begins to depart. Um, let's take a short break, guys, um, and let's take, uh, let's go 10 minutes, uh, we'll come back in 10, and we'll see what else we can get done tonight. How about that? Sounds good. Um, sounds good. All right. Okay. Cool. Okay, uh, looks like we're all back, so, um, you guys know the third event for most of you is a simple more human gladiatorial game set up, men against men and men against beasts. Um, it's just meant to be a good time for you. Uh, the fourth night... Do, do, do. Uh, tomorrow night, there's going to be a talent show, essentially. Uh, recite poetry, sing, dance, that kind of stuff. And the fifth night, they're going to have uh, people reciting single-act plays from history. Uh, but tonight, for Astartes and Labiena, um, let's start with you two guys. Um, Astartes, what do you choose to do on the third night of games? I think I'm going to go feed, actually. The city is still um, partying and having their own set of games. Uh general convivial atmosphere um, the difficulty to feed off of unsullied blood tonight is going to be difficulty 5 instead of difficulty 6 uh, also because it's a huge party there's no threat of violence on the streets this week I was going to say Labiena would probably want to go feed as well um, excellent I think I think the two of you could feed uh, together at the same time. Uh, it'd be a good time to hang out. Okay, I'm going to go by, pick up Labiana, and ask her if she wants to go find some sustenance tonight. Sounds like a grand idea. Okay. Do you have any preference? Oh, not really. Okay, then I'll make the decisions, if you don't mind. I'll go for it. Okay, 
Chris. I'm going for the high end people. Okay. Yeah, you make your way towards uh, the Kellyan Hill, which is in the southern edge of the city. Um, that is the rich man's of rich man's rich man's hill, um, and uh, there are several gathering places uh, amongst the uh, rich manors, the the domuses, um, where they go to pretend to be. Uh, you know, peasants. Um, naturally, uh, it's difficult to tell who is truly poor and who is merely slumming it. Um, so give me a uh, perception plus empathy roll. Pick them out of the crowd. Div six? Uh, yes, please. Um, outstanding. Uh, you swiftly pick the guys who are kind of looking wide-eyed, like, man, I don't belong here. And they're just kind of looking around and just pretending like they belong in this area. And then you have the guys who are like, yeah, I'm here all the time. So you, you've kind of picked out the neighborhood regulars who frequent this spot. Um, the regulars would be like the servants of the high class, you know, the servants of the rich men. They're probably pretty clean, um, well-kept, well-cared for. I'm not going to be sick. So those are the men you kind of zero in on. Men and women, to be clear. And I go for... I see if I can get two of them. I'm going to take two blood points of each. Okay. So, um, are you going to help Labiena hunt here? Because Labiena is going to have a hard time fitting in. Yes, I'm going to help her. Okay. Um, so you need to lure somebody outside for her, and probably one or two people for yourself as well. Uh, so, well, let's let's talk it out. How do you how are you going to go about doing this? Well, well let's go. Hmm? Oh, go on. Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say that um, Lobbyon will probably just offer to wait in a nearby alley. Um. If Astartes is willing to lure a couple of people for them. Okay, then I'm gonna approach them and basically use my appearance to... I wanna roll appearance and subterfuge mm -hmm. to get a few of them to come with me. Okay, well, before we do that, I would like you to roll your... Uh... You need to convince them that they're they're part of the party, part of the part of the life here. So let's roll charisma and uh, oh, I don't want to go performance. That that doesn't make any sense to me. Empathy. Let's go do manipulation plus empathy. Div six. Yeah, div six. Okay, yeah, you got. You sit down. You you roll up to a table. You kind of shove some people out of your way. Um, you're talking to the, to the guys. You know, you know how hard your day has been. You know, so on and so forth. Uh, they're of course talking about the games that have been going on, the comings and goings of, of daily life and such. And, and you're putting on a good show for them, getting them involved with you. Um, now for the um, seduction of, you know, hey, how about a four-way? Uh, uh, so now roll your appearance plus um, appearance plus subterfuge. Uh, your difficulty is five, but you need th uh, three successes. Um, actually, my difficulty, thanks to my merit, drops to three. Okay. All right. Okay. There you go. They're like, oh, 
all right, hey, I can get into this. You know, it's festival fertility and all that. Uh, um, one of them stands up, and it's actually a girl. Girl, two and three, and two guys get up and like, hey, I guess we're gonna go have some fun. You know, let's go do it. And uh, you guys kind of head out, go across the street, um, and they're like, hey, are you sure you kind of live through here? That's not really kind of what we were expecting. You know, I thought we'd be going up and down the hill to the, to the, one of the residences over there. Don't worry about it. This is just a shortcut. They're, they're kind of, I, you get with so many successes, they're kind of like, okay. Uh, they're kind of looking around and uh, they have you go in the alley first and they walk in after you. And I grab the girl, start kissing her neck, right. and I go for the bite. Um, how about you, Laviana? Um, well, she's probably going to strategically wait until she has one that, that has their back to her. Right. Yeah, you can do that. When, she, when she's in uh. position, she's just going to kind of you know, grab and... Yeah. Do me a favor, roll your, uh, roll your manipulation plus stealth. You're, you're trying to blend into the surroundings here. You belong here. Nothing here to see. Don't already have set up. Stealth. Standard diff? Yes, standard, please. Okay, yeah, they're not paying that much attention to you. Um, I'm going to have the one guy free because uh, we're going to have one guy that had diff eight. No, yeah, yeah, they just kind of ignore you. Like, oh, you know, those fucking bums, they come here every so often. So, yeah, the, the two, one of them's like, hey, man, it goes to the start, it's like, hey, man, save some for us, right? Yeah. You know, calm down a little bit. You know, we we can wait till we get to a nice bed. And as, uh, the lady, of course, she her head's all on back. She's like, uh, uh as uh, the feeling of the vampire kiss overwhelms her. And uh, Labiana, you step out, you stand up, you step behind the uh, the guy at the very back who's got his back to you. And you do what? Um. Hold on, right before Labiana oh. goes in for it, I'm going to grab the other guy and pull on him and start kissing him to take his mind off what's going to happen behind him. Because you said there were one girl and two guys, right? Yes. I'm going to distract the other guy, not the free, the one that Labiana is right. going. So yeah, the one guy is like tapping on our shoulder. He's like, hey man, save some for the rest of us, you know. Let's like, calm down. We'll, we'll, we'll get there. And, uh, you like grab his hand, you're like, oh, there's plenty for you here, big boy. And, you know, you bite into him. And, uh, he immediately is like, oh, as the feelings of the vampire kiss uh, take effect. And, uh, Labiana, you're free to grab this guy from behind if you want. Grab the last man. Yeah, that's exactly what she's gonna do. She's just gonna. I don't know exactly how she's gonna do it, but pretty much just grab and sink the fangs okay. straight into the neck. Yeah, no roll. You just grab from behind, one arm across his shoulder, one arm across his uh, stomach, and you just grab, pull, you know, you flip the mask off and chomp. Um, how much blood do you each of you take? I take two from the girl, one from the other guy. Okay. How about you, Labiana? No, I'm not going to lie. Labiana's going to try and take as much as she can. Okay. Um, you can drink it all fast, as fast as you want. Um, three points per round if you wanted to. Um, 
So the only impediment here is, is Stardust going to stop you or not? Yeah. I'm going to stop her when she reaches around three points or something like that okay. and offer him the other guy, All right, the so one that one from. She's she's feeding, and his, his knees start to sag real bad. He's like, oh, and you see him get real pale. Um, you're not sure how much she's taking yet, but you're like, hey, slow down. I, I got this guy right here. Um, so, uh, Labiana, that's going to be uh, four blood points for you on, on from the first guy. He's pretty well taken care of. Um, yeah, he's he's not doing so hot, but he's probably going to live, you think. But she'll just gently kind of let, uh, lean it, let, set him down, lean him up against the wall. Yeah, he, he's going to be in sad shape for a couple of weeks. Then you grab the other guy who's already down one. How much do you feed off of him? In this case, she might just take, or perhaps not wanting to uh, take too many lives today. She she might just take two. Okay. Him. Yeah, you you let him go when his legs start to get too weak to hold him up, and um, he's like, oh, and you feel the heart start to beat harder and hard but slow as it's trying to pump. Um, blood that's not there anymore. Road of Bones. Road of Bones. Checking the sins for Road of Bones. Just to make sure. Got it here somewhere. Alright. Showing fear and is presenting a line, compassion, or pity. Yep, I think you did good on all that stuff. All right, yeah, you, uh, let's see if he survives or not. Defeat. Yeah, he should be okay. You got plenty of experience. You recognize the signs. You think he's going to be okay. All right, um... Anything else for the two of you guys tonight, or you just part ways and, and go enjoy yourselves? Uh, Labiana, if you don't mind, can I tag along with you? Um, out of character, fairly certain Labiana's going to want to pay. I think the only thing she, she can think of doing is... Uh, Perhaps an inventor come with studying some more with Falzia. And with that in mind, she'd turn to Astartes and say, I mean, you're more than welcome. Um, that is, if you're up for um, seeing things that could potentially be worse than what could have happened tonight. <laughs> Last night I had a very great night, so I'm in very good spirits right now, so I'm up for anything. Try me. Well, and I if you wish. <laughs> and I smiled that date mark boy smile that I have. I'm just happy as can be at this, at this moment, so I will follow her. Alright, um, you guys head over to uh, Falzia. She's, uh, um, Labiana, you step in and you're like, kind of used to uh, seeing the clutter, uh, to put it mildly. Astartes, you have never seen anything so disgusting in your life. You descend down a trapdoor. And you get to, uh, there's a, the chambers, there's four, there's a, a short passageway and four chambers that are tunneled into the ground, into the rock. And, um, the first thing you notice is that there's literal just body parts everywhere. The smell of rot 
that sickly sweet smell of, of decaying meat is everywhere. Um, the, uh, and I swore I had a freaking picture of her thing in here. Yes, yeah, so that's that sickly sweet smell of decaying, like, beef, decaying flesh. Uh, horrible, horrible smell. Um, it, it, it's horrible precisely because it's, it's actually kind of pleasant, but it's got that, that rotty, nasty, poisony smell underneath it. It kind of makes you want to gag. And you notice there's just body parts all over the place. And, uh, <clears throat> and the, so there's two chambers on your left, one ahead, and there's one on your right. Um, as you walk up to the, the chamber on your first chamber on your left is literally like packed full, um, stacked up with body parts in, in various stages of decay. Um, the second chamber, uh, is, has a, a zombie that is just, standing uh, a sustaining corpse in the in the doorway um, and it looks to be to where Fazia sleeps uh, the chamber on the right is some sort of uh, lab setup and it has a guy um, who is shackled to uh, a chain hanging out of the ceiling and instead of like an iron manacle it's it looks like his um, bone and flesh has been molded, physically molded to the chain, so he can't, if he's going to try to get free, he'd literally have to rip the chain out of his forearm. Um, and then in the very last back chamber, it's like a laboratory setup. Uh, it's got, a, you'd notice it, through your occult learnings, a number of necromantic and sh uh, sigils uh, invoking uh, rituals about um, the gods of death and uh, decay, uh, but there's also mixed with things about life. Um, and there's various like heads lined up on a shelf, and uh, you see uh, a lady. She's got very th shiny, pale skin stretched super tight across her face. Um, on the wall hanging behind her is a set of robes. And a, um, and a mask. Uh, and so the lady is sitting there is, is nude. Uh, but there is not feminine at all. Like you can count every rib. Every like ridge of her vertebrae. As she's uh, sitting on a stool. And she's looking at these heads. Uh, and then she writes something. Um, and she like she'll poke and prod. And then she'll write something. Um, and do you, know, you notice the last one still has a set of lungs and a heart and stuff attached to it, and it's alive. Actually, I want to ask something, because my particular obsession, my clan weakness, is occult. So I might be triggered in here right now, with all the occultic stuff hanging around. Um, just run with it. Um, I, it you, you, you would probably walk in here and just be like, Dude, this is so fucking cool. Oh my god. Why did I do this earlier? <laughs> yeah, I would be like going up close to the zombie, check him out, and just run over to the walls just like a little kid. Trying to see everything they can see at this moment. Yeah, dare I say it, a vampire kid in a blood bank? <laughs> <Yeah>. Yes. <laughs> yep. Um, so Fuzzy, here she comes in and she stands up. She goes, she goes, Labiana, Labiana. Hey, listen, so I'm glad you're here. Um, I need somebody to pump some air into the lungs. It, I, it's having a little bit of trouble inflating and making it talk. And then and then she's like, all, like, all her attention is focused on Labiana. And then she's like, oh, wait a minute. There's somebody with you. Who's this? Oh, forgive me. Um, this is an associate. And I walk over and present my hand. Hello, I'm a Stardis. Nice place you have here. Um, shakes hand. She says, uh, she shakes her hand. She goes, um, 
Thanks. Hey, listen, be a deer, since, you know, uh, you're a guest here and everything. Do me a favor. Walk over to those lungs, all right? And I want you to um, blow down the mouth, okay? And then compress the lungs just a little bit, just very gently, okay? Can you do that for me? Okay. Cool. Hey, Lobbyana, get your notes. Um, oh, and uh, that reminds me, if, if you're going to be helping, uh, you might want to strip down because, you know, it gets a little bit messy. Um, do you have a oh, place where I can put my clothes? Uh, she gestures at the wall behind her. There's, like, um, uh, wooden hooks on the wall. Yeah. Love you, Anna. Gets, obviously, I will get prepared, you know, notebook, It's um, It's pen very and crowded, I should say. Like, packed with, like, stuff. Um, they clearly need more space. <laughs> so, a strip and go over to the lungs, then. Um, what's your medicine rating? Zero. Zero. All right, so you just deep breath and go, Ooh, and start blowing in hard. All right, and Fozzie is like, hey, whoa, 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 slow down, slow down, slow down. Calm yourself, buddy. Hey, listen. So these things have a, a stretch point, right? Um, <clears throat> I, I, I'll tell you what. Uh, before we do this, let me show you what it's like on, on the guy, uh, on my uh, tackling dummy over here. And she takes you into the room with the guy who's, who's like chained to the, to the ceiling. And uh, she, she opens his shirt and pulls it off and you see that uh, um, there's something done to his throat so he can't scream and shout. Like he has no, he can't, has no way to talk. And she's like, alright look. And she just like sinks her fingers in like clay into the flesh and peels his flesh back. And you can tell she's done this several times. And she's like, all right, buddy, I need you to breathe. And he's like almost panting, like, oh, oh, oh. you know how it gets, you, you know how you breathe and you get hurt real bad when you experience real bad pain? That's, that's how he's trying to breathe. And she goes, look at his lungs, okay? See how it expand, contract, expand, contract? Um, there's only so far they can expand, so you got to be really careful. Um, they will explode if you put too much air in them. Okay, sorry about earlier. Hmm. After so many centuries, I'm still learning something new. Right. Yeah, so she just puts his ribs back and like squishes, mushes the flesh back together. It's not a great job. <laughs> it doesn't look nice. And she's like, okay, thank you. And she pats the pats the guy's cheek. She's like, that's a dear boy. I'll be back for you later. And uh, goes back in the room. She's like, all right. Now, on three. One, two, three. Go. And I blow lightly, but with a pressure, a constant pressure. And be careful not to overextend the lungs. Right. And then when you compress them, the, the sound that comes out of the voice is, Kill me! Kill me! Uh, kill me! Um, and she's going, Very interesting. It's very interesting. And she makes a couple of notes. And uh, uh, Labiana, she's like, Okay. He's not really saying much more. I, I really want him to, to, to tell me. And, she, she's like, and she goes up to the guy. She starts talking real loud. I want you to tell me... What you are feeling. What does it feel like? Like, super patronizing. Like, she has no conception of how much pain this guy is enduring. Um, and, Labiana, you're very well accustomed to this. Um, she does not give a shit about anybody's pain. Or, or anything like that. It only is in so much as it affects what she's trying to do. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so the, the experiment continues uh, in such a manner for a couple of hours and she's like well okay Labiana what else would you like to observe on this before we um, before we close off 
uh, and finish this uh, subject and put them with our row of heads over here. Is there, is there any other thing that you would like? Um, <clears throat> any other observation you think we should be making? So Labiana will um, to visibly think for a moment and starts pondering back to the uh, recent uh, festivities and the the tournaments and she's like well you know these last few these last couple of days have had me fascinated and wanting to sort of I suppose to see more of that in a sense. It it was fascinating to see how, you know, skin reacts to various uh, implements, I guess you could say. And uh, I don't know how much of that you've uh, explored, but I would certainly like to explore a bit more of that. Hmm. So puncture like puncture versus slash and and <clears throat> um does the size and shape of instruments uh detail um such things like blood loss and uh and injury she kind of exactly. nods she's like i haven't really looked into that too much I, I just know hard part you know bad places to hit people um she goes okay a sardis do you know Dominate? Sandy, I do not, but I know okay. Presence. She's like, damn it. Like, I really need somebody to make this head. Tell me what I want to know. Right. Uh, maybe, uh, maybe I can try... Um, what's out of character? What's the third dot named again of Presence? It, ma it makes you want you to be your, uh, your good, good friend. Yeah, maybe I can try to go visit him that way. She's like, yeah, I mean, you can give it a try, but I don't really think it'll work. Uh, just because, uh, you know, I've been treating him really well, and, you know, he hasn't responded to that. So, you know, what, how's, how's this going to be any different? And I want you to know that she says that with a straight fucking face. Yeah. You're, you're, you already have a negative answer, so... We should try. Maybe you can get a positive. You might never know. Okay. Um, you don't even have to roll. You entrance him. So, my good friend, tell me. Can you please tell this dear lady over here what you're feeling? And you have to whoosh, pump his lungs up. He's like, please kill me. Kill me. Oh, it hurts. Oh, kill me. Oh. And, uh, that, that, that's pretty much all you're getting out of him. She goes, see? I told you. That's all I've got for the last day. That's all I can get out of him is, please kill me. I, it hurts. He doesn't have anything else to say. I really want to know what he's feeling like as we cut off the lung, the, the air supply. If only there was a way we could make it talk, like, intelligibly from beyond death. And tell us what it feels like. Labiena's been kind of um, thinking as well as observing. As an idea, not sure if it will work. She speaks up. Perhaps, perhaps uh, we have been going about this, I wouldn't say wrong, but perhaps there's another way to try and garner the answer that we want. Perhaps we should ask him why we should kill him. You may be able to articulate, you know, what it is that is causing him to want death so badly. Okay, I that, back at the... that is a huh? very interesting idea. I think we should try that. Uh, Astartus, if you please, pump his lungs up. Can I do it? Alright. Um, and he goes, It hurts! Can't breathe! Oh, 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 the torture! Oh, oh, oh. Uh, and 
Uh, that's pretty much its answer. I uh, ask him, where does it hurt exactly? And I pump his lungs back up. Please, <laughs> it just hurts. And, like, it's actually crying. It just hurts. Um, and Lavi and Fuzzy is like, see? That's all I can get out of the thing. It, it, there, there's no granularity. It won't break down. Um, discrete sensations. Maybe you can get inside his mind and see what he's actually thinking. Yo, that's another good idea. I'm glad you came by. Um, I could try that, especially since you're here to pump the lungs. Um, unless you would like to try it too. Um, Labiana, uh, do, you, do you have the ability to uh, monitor thoughts yet? I don't think so. That's uh, out of character. That's all specs all specs four. level four, yep. isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. no, she doesn't have that one yet. How about you, Stardust? No? Okay. I'm well, sorry, it's enough. Okay, well, if you continue to palpate the lungs for me, inhale, um, Labiana, I will, need, I will be describing his thoughts, and I will need you to take the notes. I am ready. All right. Um, I will walk over to him and tell him, when I pump your lungs, I want you to think exactly where on your body it hurts and how much it hurts, and I'm pump and I will pump his lungs. Um, uh, he still just groans and moans in pain, and uh, Fozzie is staring at him, just like eyes locked intently. And she goes, "Huh." So, I guess that's what it feels like to drown. He said it was a sensation of, of pressure and a, a wanting of a wanting to swallow or, or not quite swallow. Uh, you know how you expand the lungs when you have to inhale air to, to talk. Um, it was like the body wanted to expand but couldn't. And it was causing him great mental anguish. And, of course, the pain from, you know, having no skin and even the air across his body and exposed nerves were, were doing it. So, mm, that's a good, uh, yeah, I'll start it. That's a really good idea. I'm glad you came by. Did you get all that, Labiana? Labiana's furiously scratching. Yep, got it. Excellent. Yeah, yeah this was really good. Thank you, Astartes. Don't mention it. And I walk back over to the zombie. You notice um, runes of blood, blood uh, runes that it's obvious nobody drew them physically, but when they splashed blood on it, the blood uh, magically took on the shape. Can I ask a question? Does he stay up indefinitely, or do you have to keep repeating this ritual night after night? Oh, it rots eventually. And we have it to replace it. Ah, okay. Cool. Let's start, let's start walking away, go into the one of the other walls to see what's written on it and stuff like that. All right. Yeah, so uh Buzz. Bobby, I know you're very familiar with this by now. There's um, stuff about eavesdropping on the walls and, and uh, using death energies to keep the place safe uh, and keep it hidden. So it's like a general um, go-away aura to it. So you're not going to just stumble across this place. Like you have to really be looking for it. Um to, to find it. like It's, it's not going to turn away to someone determined to get in here. But uh, nobody's going to be on a, you know, let's go look at that abandoned building. There's kind of a general, man, this place is super creepy. Let's go somewhere else. Let's sort avoid of vibe. it, yeah. yeah. My, my occult background get me to understand what is actually written, or do I really need necromancy to know about it? 
Um, roll your, you don't have necromancy, so roll your intelligence plus a call to difficulty 7. It is interesting to know, you know, what kind of a language all those rituals, all that ritual stuff is actually written in. Then again, it's most likely okay. Latin. It is written in um, Dacian. Uh, the particular words are Dacian, and there are appeals to gods, which you've never seen. But Astartes does recognize certain star symbols and certain common death symbols um, that you, you, you can put together that this is some sort of ritual designed to turn away um, casual people. Like, to, it, it will turn away, it will influence people to go away. Casual passes by. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it, it puts out like a, almost like the flaw, you know. Um, eerie presence? Yes, thank you. <laughs> it, 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 it's like, it's like he, she gave the whole area eerie presence. Like, people are just like, eh, that place kind of creeps me out. Eh, yeah. And just like, nobody wants, you, you don't come here unless you want to come here. Or invited. Exactly. I see. Correct me if I'm wrong, but does this ritual, does this and that, and I point all that out for them to see if I'm right and if I understood what is written over there? Yeah, you, you can you can point it out, and she won't explain exactly how she did it, um, but she'll be like, "Yeah, that was that's very good. You're a very intelligent, young man." Well, thank you. Uh, I was a scholar in my previous life, so I like to believe that it was worth f for something. All the money my father threw and my education. You said, well, you were so helpful with that experiment, I won't even charge you for that knowledge. Well, thank you. Appreciate it. All right. Well, it's getting pretty late, so uh, perhaps, um, Asardis, you should be going back to your um, sleep chambers. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry about it. Okay. See you guys later. Okay. All right. Bye. Bye. No worries. Have a good night, Asadis. And thank Bye, you Anna. again. See you soon. See you soon. All right. And, and I head back to my haven. Okay. Um, I kind of want to save the third night of Albina stuff for next session. Um... You guys are have any problem with that? No problem. Not at all. Okay. Awesome. No so is problem. there anything else you guys want to do tonight? We got, you know, about half an hour left. I think I'm good, to be honest. It would be possible. Okay, is... Go ahead. No, I was going to say, I think Labian is exactly where she wants to be. <laughs> You were going to say something, Albina? Uh, I was going to ask if it was possible for Albina and Astartus uh, to meet. Yeah, I think so. Um, yeah, Fawzia didn't want to be rude, but she was like, uh, you're pretty fucking curious. Get the fuck out of my place. Uh, yeah, I got the vibe. <laughs> um, in that case... It's, it's still early on. It's still early in the night, right? Yeah, we're talking like 1 o'clock in the morning. So, several hours. I definitely do not want to go back to the Haven because of all of the memories there. So I'm going to stop by the Cult Haven and see what Salbina is up to. All right. Um, Albina, we're going to say that this is after um, the hunt and everything has gone down. Um, so uh, I'm going to tell you, you have been in several fights tonight. Some you won, some you lost. Um, there was a, a big hunt that went down, and while you did not catch the vampire that was released, um, you were invited to participate, and there were a few tales told about the Road of the Beast, um, like the parable. Uh, but we'll go over that in more detail next game, but just for the sake of what you've been doing tonight, that's what happened. Mm-hmm.
So once I start this, uh, comes knocking on the code haven, Avna opens up the door for him. Hello, good evening, Alvina. How are you doing tonight? Good evening. It has been a tough night. More event with the most of the other nights that I had in the past century. Would you like to come inside? Sure, sure. And I go inside. inside. Yeah. And I walk Stop. in. I start this. May I speak to you some private methods? Perhaps some sensitive methods? I narrow my eyes. Okay. She motions for you to follow her into uh, the, code, the downstairs area. The vampire is on the area. area. I've been keeping. I've been keeping in mind what happened that night that we were together in the in which your sister met her end. Do you like to talk about this occurrence? I take in a deep breath. What is there to talk about? She's dead. How do you feel? How do I feel? Broken. I feel like I should not be here at this moment. Because she was my reason to exist since the first night of my embrace. My sole focus was on finding her. And when I finally found her, we got so little time to mend our relationship. So... At this moment, I really do not have a lot of reasons to be walking around there. You see all that boyish smile, the happy go luck attitude that he had, it was just a facade. He was hiding his true pain at that moment. He's showing what he's actually really feeling. As you speak about how little time you got to assist and how uh, and how little and how you feel a bit lost at uh, the moment without her. Alvina starts nodding along, uh, her thumb going over to rub over her wrist where she hid the where she slashed open and hit the uh, ring this night. Let me make you a proposal. If you desire to seek vengeance on the werewolves, I will move every resource that I have available to me to assist you. But if we target just that particular werewolf or all of the werewolves? That's up for you to decide. Mm. I had a similar event occur to me centuries ago about a century ago and I felt myself satisfied enough with just one werewolf although we're not uh, although if we are to add a few more bodies to the pile I am not be opposed What actually happened? Because if I remember correctly, out of character, I was the one who saw the visions, right? The ring. Yes, you saw the vision of her embracing the guy. Yeah. He was your child, wasn't he not? Yes. I'm sorry for your loss. But let's say hypothetically, if I were to agree with you, how will you find out the identity of this werewolf, this particular one, because if we go attacking every werewolf we see, it's going to start a war. 
perhaps a war might be desirable. There will be plenty of werewolves dead if a war to begin. But there will also be plenty of kindred dead. Yes. That just means that we have to be sure that we are not among them. Neither is no anyone that we cared for. Um, let's just say if we target this particular werewolf, do we have a way so that we can kill it? Because in a head-to-head -head fight, we're, we are both screwed. What do you have in mind? I can call upon the abuse and have and had some of my servants uh, search the area to see if we can locate the haven of the werewolf. And once that is done, we can try to get him one-on-one. -on -one. Well, not one-on-one, -on -one, just us against him. Um, yeah, go on. And as I said, I can call upon some favors to see if I can get some more backup on our side. Okay. Let me ask something. I really do not know the origin of your power, though I have seen some of them in my short time knowing you. In this abyss that you call, is somebody that needs to breathe air able to breathe? What do you mean? Like, if you... I've seen you pull people into the abyss, right? I have never done it myself, although I have heard the tales, yes. But you never tried it, so you're not sure if you can do it. No. Okay. But are you positive that you will be able to hold this creature down with your powers? I am not certain, no. Then how are we going to kill it? We can. I can call upon favors. I can exchange. Uh, I can exchange wounds. And if nothing else, I have seen silver cut into their skin and burn it. If we can hit it with enough silver, we can take it down. And if we can catch it by itself, we can have the advantage. Now, the real question is, why do you want to take revenge on this creature so much? I don't. What's in I mean, it for you? I don't want to. I'm really offering you the, the, my assistance should you decide to. Because there is not much things that I care for in this world. There is not much things that I feel for in this world. But... Mm -hmm. Anger, hatred, and amongst them, I don't know the few feelings that I still have. And I can sympathize with your pain. And I can draw similarities between your pain and my the one that I suffer and the anger and hatred that arouse within me. If it is if there is similar feelings within you, then I am willing to assist you in seeing that that you fulfill what they desire of you. Um, out of character, Chris. Can I use my particular flaw to find the name of this werewolf and where he lives? Um, yes, you can. <laughs> so, I think I'm going to try it then. Okay. Um, I'm gonna, what you see is... The Sardis is like, I need a second. And he kind of assumes a meditative pose. And he appears to go within himself, mentally. <clears throat> um, so he, to, to you, he appears to be simply, like, meditating. Alrighty, alrighty, alrighty. This is, I believe, the second time you have used this. Yes. So, so 
So you roll Wits plus Occult. Um, this is... I'm going to say Diff 7. Um, because this isn't super secret knowledge. And... If you get... i got to go back and look up your flaw here for a second. So, excuse me for playing around with the character sheet while you're trying to roll dice. Uh, cryptic or convoluted? <clears throat> Alright, so you roll your... Yeah, so roll your Wits plus a call diff 7, and then roll your Willpower minus 1. At uh, diff 6. Um, you ask the question and, all right, uh, you can ask the question again. You do not receive a vision, but you can ask the question a, a third, a, another time at the same difficulty. But that's my willpower. It'll be minus two. Goes. Yep. I about that. It's every time I use it. Correct. It will not reset to a... Correct. So the more you dip into it, the harder and harder it is to stave off the effects. Um, I'm gonna do it one more time then. Ah, excellent roll this time. All right. Well, real power minus two. Okay. No negative effects. Um, with four successes, you are transported in a vision. Um, it's a typical boy, uh, growing up in the rough streets of Rome, um, and he gets plucked up by a group of people and is getting taught, um, taught to be a protector, to be part of a family, um. And they are calling him, uh, pro, 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 the, 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 uh, Prostavis, let's call it. His name is Prostavis. Um, you hear that clearly in your head. Uh, Prostavis, uh, is taught to protect family, uh, to protect the streets. And, um, you see that he is so proud, uh, to be doing what he's doing. Um, and... Uh, you are given to understand that he typically patrols um, through several fora uh, in the back alleys and he is uh, protecting someone or something um, in this region as somewhere in, within the Forum Venalia um, and along the Palatine Hill. It's his typical hangout. And he very rarely patrols alone. Like There's almost always a group. Then this is a. I'm relating this to you in words, but you get it in a vision. Um, you hear the name. Um, you see the buildings that you recognize. The buildings. Um, you recognize the Palatine Hill. You recognize um, the Forum Venalia. Uh, you see several people, the same people, um, several times over, uh, on on many of the uh, trips around the Forum. So that's that gives you. Okay, this guy goes with a group of normally three, sometimes five um, people, uh, and you, his typical hangouts. I relay all that information to Albina. Um, Albina, what you said to me earlier, to me it means like... You like taking revenge on some on people, right? Yes. 
What do you say we break him emotionally before we break him physically and put him out of his misery? She walks over to you and proceeds to place her hands around you and put into a hug. We are going to give him ten ten folds of the pain that he causes. Correctly, because he's a protector. So, what pains a protector more? Physical pain or watching or seeing those that he protects suffer and he cannot do anything about it? We are going to show him what failure he is. Correctly. I'm not so sure right now, but let's take our time. Revenge is best served cold. And the first time you truly see him smile, even it's a creepy smile at the moment. Yeah, Albana, you kind of knew he wasn't on humanity. But this is the first time where, where you're like, holy shit, this guy is like not on humanity at all. Like, like the fact that he's getting pleasure from contemplating this uh, completely says, well, I don't know what road he's following, but it sure as fuck ain't human. Um, another thing, I'll be now. Hmm? Whatever you saw me do earlier, please don't mention it to anybody. She just smiles. I don't I didn't see you doing anything. And a smile back. Stay as long as you like. I have open matters to attend, but feel free to enjoy everything that you have available at the coat. I think I might. And I go upstairs and start playing music and enter entertain the crowd. Awesome. On that note, let's sign off for the night. Um, I think everybody gets two experience points for tonight. I love the interaction. I think you guys did a great job. Um, hopefully you guys feel the same. You okay with that? Oh, definitely. Yeah, really. Awesome. All right. That was a great session. Um, next game is going to be first weekend in December, which would be December 4th. Uh, so until that time, you know, hope you guys stay safe out there. Good night. Right, good night. Good night. Okay, guys, thanks once again for listening. I hope you uh, enjoyed the session. Um, we will uh, continue playing as long as we can, uh, as long as you guys keep enjoying it. All right. Thanks. Have a great evening.